Well, it's a Thursday night in Winston-Salem, and it's the beginning of the final weekend of the regular season here in 2023-2024 and the FPHL. Three games coming up here this weekend between the top two teams in the Continental Division as the Carolina Thunderbirds and Columbus River Dragons meet for the final times here in the regular season. Carolina leading the series 4-3-1 to here this year and trying to be able to pick up points and some momentum heading into the Commissioner Cup playoffs. It's game one of three here this weekend between the Thunderbirds and the River Dragons and it's coming up here in just a little bit here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Welcome inside the Fairgrounds Arena for the first time this evening. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Should have another intriguing matchup between these two sides. The two top teams in the Continental Division and arguably the two top teams in the FPHL. Columbus definitely is the top team in the FPHL here this regular season. They clinched last weekend. Home ice advantage throughout the whole Commissioner Cup playoffs going from rounds one to the finals. Carolina on the other side though, they are the two seed in the Continental Division. The Continental Division is already locked up. Carolina will be facing off against Port Huron come next Friday up in Port Huron for game one of the first round of the playoffs. On the other side, Columbus they will see Mississippi and they have to go to Biloxi coming up next Friday evening. We're getting ahead of ourselves here on a Thursday evening. Carolina coming into tonight on an absolute tear. 9-0-1 in their last 10 games. They have not lost a game in regulation since all the way back on March 2nd. They have faced Columbus since then. Now it's back on March 8th, where it was a 5-4 overtime win for the River Dragons. Ended up taking the two points on the evening, but after that, Carolina has only lost once, and that was in overtime a couple of Saturdays ago at the Apex Center up in Whitfield. Columbus on the other side are 7-3-0 in their last seven. They're coming off a 9-5 drubbing of Mississippi last Sunday down in Biloxi. They faced off against Blue Ridge last Friday and Saturday at the Columbus Civic Center. They won game one. That ended up clinching them the number one seed, but they ended up dropping game two and home last Saturday. They did have some guys out, but then they get back on the bus and they head down to Biloxi after Carolina had swept the Seawolves last Friday and Saturday. Carolina putting up six goals on in each of those games last weekend as the Thunderbirds now, their offense is clicking at the moment defenses look good and the netminders have been sensational as well. You've heard it, the head coach Steve Harrison talk about how he's been spoiled with his goaltenders here over the past month, month and a half and that continues now as now or right around the corner from the playoffs. He said it's a hard decision, still has yet to make a decision but he does know who he has starting tonight and we'll get to that here in just a little bit but it should be an interesting one here between these two sides after they saw each other six times back in the calendar year of 2023. They've only seen each other twice since the new year. They first saw each other on January 17th down in Columbus. That ended up being a 7-4 victory for the River Dragons. And after that, they didn't see each other again until March 8th, and that was the 5-4 overtime victory. So these two teams have seen each other sparingly here over the past few months, but now they're going to get real comfortable with each other coming up here this weekend. Game 1 tonight here at home, 7.35 once again tomorrow here at home, and then 7.05 p.m. in Columbus on Saturday to round out the regular season. We're just getting underway here in Winston-Salem on a Thursday evening. A lot to get to here on Thunderbirds pregame. The head coach, Steve Harrison, he's coming up next. We'll take a look at the highlights from the last time that these two sides saw each other. And a couple of key players out for both sides as well here this evening. We'll get to that coming up as Thunderbirds pregame rolls along. The head coach, Steve Harrison, is coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. 
We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Carolina Columbus regular season finale coming up here this weekend between the Thunderbirds and the River Dragons. Brennan Riley being joined by the head coach Steve Harrison and coach here we go. Uh, made it to the final week of the regular season. You got 53 games in the books. You got the final three coming up here against a very good Columbus team. Uh, heading into this weekend, where do you see your team right now? How was the week at practice? Well, uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. I think the guys are focused and uh, uh, I think they're anticipating this and, and they're, they're waiting for it and uh, uh, I, I think it's going to be a fun weekend to watch uh, how they come out, how we come out, and, and uh, uh, I think, as, as I, I said before, it's going to be a little bit of a chess match, see how uh, uh, nobody wants to show every hand they have right now, so I, I, I think everyone's just going to come out, and I think it's just going to be three great hockey games, and uh, two here and one there, and uh, uh, as I said, ho hopefully on Monday, you know, we're healthy, and, and uh, I'm feeling good about ourselves. Now, playing a team like Columbus, a very good team here, leading right into the postseason, uh, does that help your team out to make sure that they're ready to go for come next weekend? Well, no question. Question. You, you, you want to play a good team, and, and uh, obviously they won the, the, the league, and so the, yeah, it's, it, it, it gets us sharp. Uh, it gets. Uh, uh, I, I think they're excited about playing us too because I talked to them, and uh, I, I think everyone's just kind of you know if you're playing against a team that, that you know you know you're probably going to go head to head here coming up as soon. And uh, as I said, I just think uh, uh, for us as a team, uh, it's always good to play a real good team, and uh, they are, and so it's, it'll be a great challenge for us, and 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 we'll, we'll see, and, and we'll get in that mode of, of playing that type of style. Now you've seen them eight times this year. Uh, team that, as you said, won the league, uh, has clinched home ice advantage. Uh, they obviously have some great players, Justin McDonald, uh, yeah. probably going to be the MVP. But uh, what do they do? And what have you seen throughout them throughout the first eight matchups that allows them to be so successful? Well, you know, we, I, I feel great about our matchup with them. They're like, you know, we can go toe to toe with them, and and and, and when we're healthy and we're everyone's playing, I I feel very confident, uh, home or away. And uh, they're a very opportunistic team. And and one of the biggest things for us is, is that don't turn the puck over. Don't give them that chance. Uh, you know, if you're getting pinched off, get it deep. And uh, if we do that, and when we did that against them, uh, I, I thought we played very well. And uh, we have to stay out of the box. They got a great power play, and I, and I think we've are improved on our on our penalty killing. So, uh, but but again, five on five, I uh, I feel very confident. And uh, we just have to do the little things. Like uh, as I said, they they like to. Uh, I don't want to say cheat, but they're opportunistic, and, and they if they have a turnover, uh, they their transition is really good. So we have to stay away from that and don't give them those those extra chances that uh, they don't deserve. And uh, if we do that, we'll be in good shape. You've been rotating the goalies between Mario Cavalieri and Cody Karpinski. Who are you going with for game one? Well, game one tomorrow, Mario's going to go. And uh, I told him today where I'm going to make the decision uh, day by day. And uh, we'll see how it goes. This, this is that time of year where, uh, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. And, you know, Mario, uh, we could win tomorrow night and, and, and everything is going good. And I might change it because I just, uh, I kind of feel for something. So uh, we're, we're going to take it day by day. And as I said, uh, I said earlier in the week, uh, I'm very lucky. I told those two guys, too, that uh, the, the, the two of them have made it hard on me because <laughs> they both play very well here. So I'm going on a hunch, and, and I'm going to give Mario the start tomorrow, and we'll see what happens after that. Peter Panacek is back at practice this week in green, though. What's the latest on him? Well, we're not sure about him. I, I don't think he's going to play this weekend. Uh, we're not sure yet. He, there's a good chance he might play maybe Friday. We'll see how he goes. And we're just taking him day by day and see where he's at. And you know, There's a good chance he might be uh, uh, that utility player, our 10th forward. We'll see how that goes, too. So right now we're just taking it day by day. But... Uh, uh, as I said, it probably won't be until Friday or Saturday if he comes in. Well, Coach, should be a lot of fun here this weekend. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank you. That's head coach Steve Harris. Yeah, more to come here in Thunderbirds pregame. After this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered. 
ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Hey, Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! This for the ninth time this season. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Should be another interesting matchup between the top two teams in the Continental Division. Columbus coming into tonight 43 7 and 3 with 128 points. Carolina 39 11 and 3 with 113 points. One of the three overtime losses came back on March 8th for the Thunderbirds. Now is down at the Columbus Civic Center. A Fun matchup there on a Friday night in Columbus, but it ended up going Columbus's way. And we take a look at the highlights from all the way back at the beginning of March between Carolina and Columbus. Schnott battling for the puck. It's loose at some skates. Schnott finds it. Back hands over to Batita. Searching. Back out to Keeley. Goes cross ice to Gordon Whalen. Whalen a shot through traffic, and they score! With 14.26 left to go here in the first period, Jacob Schnapp gets a deflection on the shot from the point from Gordon Whalen. He gets his 17th goal of the season, and Carolina here early in Columbus takes a once to nothing lead over the River Dragons. Stuka right back to Salak, settles it down, waiting. Trying to find Pestuka in this slot. Instead, it comes to Kramer, throws one in. Rebound, here's Pestuka. He scores! Point number 300 in his FPHL career for Yuri Pestuka. And it comes with 5.13 left to go here in the first period. And it doubles the Thunderbirds lead. It's 2-0 Carolina. Moore had to wait for them to get back onside. 32 seconds to go here in the first period. Here's Slahetka shot, and they score. It took a deflection. On the shot from Nolan Slahetka. And it was Ryan Hunter getting a piece of it, getting his 22nd goal. Over to Justin Bioni, slides to the Nate Keeley at 10 to go here in the first one. Last chance, Carolina with a three on two. Petita holds a quick shot, got blocked by Slahetka. His rebound, they score! With 4.3 to go here in period number one, John Petita gets his 12th goal of the season. And Carolina responds just 24 seconds later to take the lead once again here in Columbus. Ricochets into the near half boards. Ball quill from the point. It got deflected by McDonald. Karpinski made the initial save, but the rebound, McDonald scores. Selick is his pass. Knocked down. Hunter to McDonald in front. He waits and he scores. Justin McDonald, he gets his second of the night and his 31st here this season. Another turnover in the defensive zone by Carolina. Results in the puck in the back of the net. Bank out to Nathan Volkwell. It's taken away. Here's Kramer, a shot saved by Colgan. Baker, the rebound, he scores!
The response from Carolina and Dawson Baker, who now is a goal in each of his last seven, ties us up at four here with 15.09 to go here in the third in Columbus. Face-offs one right to McDonald. Quick shot and it got blocked in front. Goes over to the far half board. Schnapp with seven seconds. Flips it all the way out to the neutral zone. Batita chasing after it. It's snapped near side. Petrantonio with two seconds and one. And for the third time this year, Carolina and Columbus are headed to overtime. McDonald at the near half boards against Baker. He holds as Petrantonio goes off to the bench. It's fired over far side. A centering pass for the win, they score! Kirk Underwood wins it in overtime for Columbus. As the River Dragons take the two points on the evening and take down the Thunderbirds by a final score of five to four. That's how it looked and sounded here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB all the way back there on March 8th. It was the game winner from Kirk Underwood coming in overtime to get the two points on the evening for the Columbus River Dragons that night. They'll also saw Yuri Pistuka get his 300th career FBHL point. A lot of good matchups this season between these two sides tonight shaping up to be another good one. We'll take a time out and come back with more here on Thunderbirds pregame. Take a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds who are the outs. Key player here tonight. I tell you that is coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey, welcome to Gatsby's Pub, your official after game venue for the Carolina Thunderbirds. After the home games, come visit Brent. I am Brent. Go, Birds! Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Hey everybody, my name is Zach Taylor, owner of Little Donuts. We're a donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts. We travel around to different events and festivals all over, including here at the Annex at every home hockey game. So next time you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, come by our trailer and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts, or by the Salem concession stand and get one of our specialty coffees or smoothies. Hope to see everyone around. Thank you and go Birds. Back here at the Fairgrounds Arena, the Thunderbirds and River Dragons coming up here in just a little bit here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB as Thunderbirds pregame rolls along. You've heard from the head coach, Steve Harrison. You've also seen the highlights from the last two or the last time these two sides have seen each other. Now it's time to take a look at the present day and we'll take a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds coming in to this evening. 9-0-1 in their last 10 games, averaging just south of five goals per game over that stretch. They're allowing less than two goals per game over the last 10 and 1.7. But tonight they will be without the reigning MVP. Gus Ford is out this evening. So Carolina loses a 42 goal, 46 assist producer this evening. No Gus Ford for the Thunderbirds tonight. Peter Benatchik, he remains out. Benatchik, he has started practicing again. He's had the green, the green jersey on in practice, meaning no contact. 
Head coach Steve Harrison is optimistic that he will be back and ready to go come next Friday in Port Huron, but not expecting to see him necessarily here this weekend, at least not tonight, and no Gus Ford as well for the Thunderbirds. But Carolina, they are confident coming into this weekend. You take a look at a guy like Dawson Baker, who was just named a Continental Division first-team All-Star earlier this week, 31 goals and 37 assists for Dawson Baker at a goal last Saturday, a career year. Uh, for the 24-year-old, he just turned 24 yesterday on the 10th for Dawson Baker. Josh Keplinger returns this weekend after not playing last weekend. 37 points for Keplinger this season. He's got points in each of his last six games. Roman Kramer has been terrific over the past month or so. He was named a Continental Division Rookie All-Star yesterday. He's already up to 41 points here this year. He had a goal and an assist last Saturday after he had a goal and three assists on Friday. For Kramer, he's got goals in four out of his last six. Six points last weekend. Goals in seven and of his last 11. Jan Salak, 22 goals and 24 assists for him here this year. Seven goals off his career high of 29. And probably unless he has a tremendous three games, probably won't be able to break that. But Jan Salak's got a point in 13 out of 16 games here this, or er, er, 13 of his last 16. Also getting recognition as well as Peter Vanacek. He was named a first-team All-Star back on Tuesday by the FPHL in the Continental Division with 10 goals and 44 assists here this year, despite we haven't seen him since all the way back on February 24th, but also Joe Kennedy, the defenseman, he has been named a first-team All-Star as well. Eight goals and 14 assists for him this season, but he has really been the backbone of this Thunderbirds defense, and he has been the enforcer as well when he has needed to be. Joe Kennedy having a terrific year here this year. Cody Karpinski and Mark Mario Cavalieri, they've been rotating. The rotation continues again tonight with Mario Cavalieri in net coming into this evening. 19-4-1 on the year with a 2.19 goals against average and a 9.30 save percentage. Those are both first in the FPHL. Save 20 out of 23 shots last Friday in the 6-3 win over the Mississippi Seawolves. He's 5-0-1 since his return from the SPHL. He has allowed at least two goals in every game that he has started so far. Against Columbus this year, he's 4-1-0. That one loss that came back on December 30th, his only loss in his career against the River Dragons. That's a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds coming into this evening. We take a look at the visitors, the Columbus River Dragons. After this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. My name is Melissa Pilsen, and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts, and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com, equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds! Hi, I'm Stuart with Pitlin Fish Brewing Company here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I've been proud to be the official craft beer of Carolina Thunderbirds since 2018. Be sure to find us on draft or in Kansas the games or come down and see us for here in downtown Winston Salem. Go birds. Up here in just about seven and a half minutes. Just take a look at the Carolina Thunderbirds. Time to take a look at the Columbus River Dragons this evening. A 43 7 and 3 record with 128 points, 7 3 and 0 in their last 10 games. The best offense in attack in the FBHL, averaging 5.2 goals per game and a 127 goal differential, which is best in the league. But 
Carolina without Gus Ford here tonight. On the other side, Justin McDonald is not playing here this evening, getting a night off for rest for the league leader in points and assists and goals with 43 and 70 and 113 points here this year. Also know Hugh Anderson, Austin Doe, and Brody Duncan for the River Dragons. So taking a look at this River Dragons team after they clinched last Friday, they have sat some guys, but they now come into this evening 7-3-0 in their last 10. They're 2-2-1 two, two and one on the, in, in their last five on the road, though, and they are a much better team at home than away from the Columbus Civic Center. They're 18-6-2 on the road while they're 25-1-1 one one in Columbus this season. That one loss coming last Saturday against Blue Ridge. Columbus has won the last two meetings between these two sides. They won 7-4 back on January 17th, and then they won 5-4 in overtime back on March 8th. And the common theme in that, no, Gus Ford did not play in either of those games. So no Justin McDonald, no Gus Ford here this evening, but we still should have a good one on tap coming up here in just a matter of minutes. We take a look at the starters, then it'll be time for the National Anthem and Puck Drop. More to come after this from Winston-Salem. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Columbus coming up to start off the final weekend in the regular season. Game one tonight, game two tomorrow at 7.35, and then it will be game three in Columbus on Saturday at 7.05 p.m. Both coaches have made their way to their respective benches. Jerome Bouchard and the head coach for the Thunderbirds, Steve Harrison, with their respective staffs. As the River Dragons getting ready to come on the ice, Carolina Silver getting ready to come out of their locker room to the tunnel to come out in front of the arena crown here this evening. Time to take a look at the starters tonight. First for the Columbus River Dragons, the visitors. They will go with Parker Layton as well as Carter Shinkaruk as the starting defenseman here tonight. Alexander Jameo, Sequoia Swan, and Cody Wickline are the starting forwards. Wickline with 60 points here this year. It's a career high for him. Sequoia Swan had a goal in his last game, while Alexander Jameo did not play in their 9-5 to victory over Mississippi last Sunday. The starting netminder is Brendan Colgan, named the Continental Division first team all-star netminder back on Tuesday. He's 21-5-1 here this season with a 2.92 goals against average and an 8.93 save percentage. He has lost his last three games though going back to last Saturday where he saved 16 out of 19 shots against Blue Ridge this season against Carolina he is 2-1-1 one, one. on the other side 
the Carolina Thunderbirds coming up here this evening. The starters on defense will be uh, Justin Bioni as well as James Farmer. Bioni now with career highs in points and assists with 18 assists and 19 points here this season. The second line, Jan Salak, Roman Kramer, and Yuri Pasuka get the start. Pasuka in his third game since returning from injury. Wow. Kramer and Salak have been on a tear here as of late, and the starting netminder here tonight for the Carolina Thunderbirds is Mario Cavalieri, a 19-4 and one record with a 2.19 goals against average and a 9.30 save percentage. The Columbus River Dragons have taken the ice for the first time here this evening as the Thunderbirds getting ready to come out here in Winston-Salem as we got game one of three here on the final weekend of the regular season coming up here between Carolina and Columbus. The national anthem and puck drop are next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds have taken the ice here in Winston-Salem, and we are just about sent for puck drop here between the Carolina Thunderbirds and the Columbus River Dragons in game one of three here this weekend. Welcome into the Fairgrounds Arena. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Got Jack O'Connell and Dylan Klein working behind the scenes here at the arena, and back in our WTOB studios is Rick O'Neill, the radio guy. It's time for our pregame ceremony and national anthem. For that, we turn over to our public address announcer, Jose Bahena.
Division with the Associates and Christian Council. The Carolina Thunder would like to thank you for your service. <laughs> Our national anthem here this evening at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina and Columbus to start off the final weekend of the regular season. The Thunderbirds 39-11 and 3 with 113 points, second in the Continental Division, locked into that two seed because of Columbus with a 43-7-3 record with 128 points this year. They do have home ice advantage throughout the whole Commissioner's Cup playoffs. Carolina in their blackout sweaters here this evening. Black sweaters with the black and red Thunderbird logo across the chest and the decals in red. Mario Cavalieri is the starting netminder this evening for the Carolina Thunderbirds. On the other side, the River Dragons in their road white sweaters with the River Dragons logo across the front. They have black numbers with teal outlines here this evening. Their starting netminder is Brendan Colgan, who is named to the Continental Division first team here this year. No Justin McDonald, no Gus Ford. Here this evening, top two point scorers in the FBHL not playing tonight. So we get Jan Solak and Alexander Jemayev to get things started. And we're underway here in Winston-Salem, Carolina and Columbus for the ninth time here this season. Starts in the neutral zone. And it'll be dumped in cross corner. Chasing after it's Justin Bione. He slides it over to Roman Kramer on the near side. Tried to find a stretch pass to Jan Salak and said it skips by him. And Parker late in the defense spin goes back. Banks a pass through the skates of Sequoia Swan. And James Farmer gets rid of it as Colgan gets his first touch here this evening. Carolina 4-3-1 this season against the River Dragons. A stretch pass. The Carter Shinkrook went off his back leg. Alexander Jamea picked it up for a second. Is now late and slides it near side to Shinkrook. At the blue line, he'll dump this one into the left of Mario Cavalieri. As Farmer, he chases after it into the corner. Takes a check from Sequoia Swan, but got rid of it to John Batita. Batita up the near side. He'll snap this one off of the end boards. Ricochets over far side. The first one to it is Hunter Bersani. He's closed off quickly by Dawson Baker as Josh Petrantonio lofts it back out to the neutral zone. And Joe Kennedy. He slides it to his D partner, Tucker Firth. One minute in here in Winston-Salem. Scoreless game here between Carolina and Columbus. The dump in went off the back of the apron. Tucker Firth has it at the point. A quick wrist shot, that one. Saved by Colgan. Kepler the rebound, and it's saved by the shoulder of Brendan Colgan. As now here comes Alex Sorjahan the other way. Gets in the attacking zone, whips on a pass as Batsita chases after Bulkwill. Wins that one-on-one -on -one battle, and Baker will float it back out to the neutral zone as Kirk Underwood will settle things down. He had the game winner in overtime the last two the last time that these two sides saw each other back on March 8th in Columbus. First time here in the calendar year that Columbus has made the trip to Winston-Salem. Keplinger dumps this one in. Underwood behind the net. Slides it far side and gets a return pass from Balkwill. A quick pass goes off of the boards and backhanded in the neutral zone to Gordon Whalen. Columbus has won the last two meetings, 7-4 back on January 17th, and then the 5-4 overtime win on March 8th, both of those coming in Columbus. Here's Ryan Hunter, 
Drops it off for Kyle Moore, walking all the way in, wrapping over far side. Wrapper out in front of save by Cavalier. Rebound opportunity, he denies it. Brian Moore right on the doorstep. Cavalier making two early saves to keep us scoreless here, 2.15 in. Whalen gets to the red line. And dumps this one in as Nolan Slahetka picks it up. Chris Seal closing on him. And he finds Jordan Popoff. Up to Kyle Moore. And it's backhanded to Bioni who will spin into his own defensive zone. Throws a little too far out in front of Roman Kramer. As picking it up is Popoff. Goes far side to Slahetka. Quick pass diagonally to the near side. Brian Moore drops it off for Kyle Moore and gets his pocket picked by Roman Kramer. Here comes Kramer up the near side. Slides it to Salak. He gets tangled up with Jamea. Throws it out in front. A bouncing puck goes into the end board. Salak picks it up, though, in the traffic. Has it. Fires it back out to the point. Farmer top of the zone. Over to Kramer. Walking in. A shot. That one didn't get all the way through. Pastuka shovels it back out. Kramer, a quick touch to Farmer. Goes inside, outside, and backhands it into the corner to Kramer. Kramer back out to the point, but he threw it too far out in front of Farmer. Is now Cavalieri well out of his crease. He'll play it. Tells Bioni to backtrack and slides it back to him. Over three minutes gone here in period number one. We're scoreless between Carolina and Columbus. Justin Bioni quickly up to Roman Kramer. He chips it along. Carter Shinkrook. He takes it. Throws it off as Salak. Ricochets over on the far side. Picking it up is Parker Layton. Backhands it over to Jay Krupp. Just coming off a hat trick last weekend. Last Saturday, to be exact, he backhands it near side. Alexander Jemayev snaps it over to Layton after uh, Firth finished off a hit on Jemayev. It's dumped in. Here's a turnover by Cavalier. Somehow he gets back out in front and makes a dive and save with the stick. Mario Cavalier with three huge saves here early on. Salak has it taken away by Jemayev, though. The threat's not over. Jemayev out to the point. Here's a quick shot saved by Cavalier. He saw it through traffic. Kennedy and Jay Krupp go into the corner, picking it up and slid it over near side. Quick shot goes through the crease. Slaying a quick slap shot off of the ricochet, and Cavalier covers here with 15.52 remaining here in the first. A quick early six shots for Columbus. Cavalier losing it behind his net, but showing off the athleticism. Diving back, back out in front and into the crease and making a save with the stick. And now a face off to his right. It's Kevlinger and Petrantonio for the draw. Petrantonio wins it. Stor Jahan chips it along and Dawson Baker will clear the zone. Baker named a first team all-star in the Continental Division back on Tuesday with 67 points. Rather make that 68 points here this season. 31 goals and 37 assists. Firth gets his stick stuck in the kick plate. Here's Petrantonio. He spins far side, throws it behind the net, floats it out in front. A bouncing puck is picked up by Stor Jahan as now Baker, he also lost his stick and he'll just kick it out. Here's Kirk Underwood up to Cody Wickline. They finally get the stick out of the kick plate. Storjahan can't hang on to it, but it trickles into the corner. Gordon Whalen delivers a nice hit on Cody Wickline as Joe Kennedy picks it up only for a second, though. It's brought back out to the point. Here's a shot from Balquill and a glove saved by Cavalieri. Here at 15.06 remaining in the first. So an interesting start here in Winston-Salem. Cavalier having to make some big saves early on. Tucker Firth getting his stick stuck in the boards. You never know here at the Fairgrounds Arena. Faceoff is won by Carolina, but it goes behind the net. Gordon Whalen pins a man to the boards, and it's picked up by Jan Salak. He brings it behind Cavalier, and will set things up. Trying to find a stretch pass. He's got Brian Moore closing on him. He finds Yuri Pastuka far side. He had two goals in his first game back last Friday in the 6-3 victory. Gordon Whalen up the near side. His shot goes wide off of the end boards. Far side. It's clear back out to the point. Clay Keeley stepping up. He pinches it down. Kramer picks it up. Looking for an option. Gets by one man. Brings it on the back end. Throws it near side to Pastuka. Didn't get enough on the shot as it got knocked around in the slot. Slahetka will float this one off of the glass. Picking it up is Kyle Moore against Keeley. Throws it in front. Puck went over the crossbar. And Kramer starts the other way. Kramer, short way to Salak, far side to Vestuka. Vestuka trying to get it back to Salak. He got tangled up in the skates of Slahetka as Carter Shinkrook. Saucers one near side, but Kyle Moore can't hang on to it. Kyle Moore named the first team all-star as well in the Continental Division. Carolina with three, making up half of the team. Ryan Hunter, he gets a touch to it. We'll dump this one in here. We got 13.57 to go in the first. Scoreless here in Winston-Salem. It's been a fun first six-plus minutes. 
the near side, here comes Hunter Bersani walking in, centers one Cavalier, he got a piece of it, he was trying to find Sequoia Swan at the point, a quick shot, that one goes wide from Parker Layton, chasing after it over into the near half boards, Hunter Bersani, he gets tangled up with Schnapp as he goes down to the ground, Layton at the far half boards, he can't hang on to the puck, him and Seol, if they got tangled up and it's cleared back out, going back to pick it up is Sequoia Swan, who's got two goals in his last three games, finds Alexander Jameev, who had the day off last Sunday, trying to dance past Firth, got a poke check, and now here comes Schnapp with Firth, two on one, one. Snap up the near side. Looking. Waiting. Got it poked away though. Picking it up though. Dawson Baker a shot and a save by Colgan. Jameev gets the rebound. Starts up the near side. Trying to backhand it in. Clay Keeley stopped it in a bank pass down to Dawson Baker. Columbus was in the middle of the change. They get back. Baker, he waits for reinforcements. Finds John Batista. Steps through one man shot and he scores! <laughs> of the year for John Benzita. Coming at the 7-0-1 mark here in the first, and Carolina takes a 1-0 lead. He had two goals last Saturday in Biloxi. And the captain with a beautiful move, dancing through a defender and snapping one past the blocker of Brendan Colgan. And Carolina leads early. Credit the patience of Dawson Baker. He had all the time in the world, made the right pass, and Batsita finishes it off. one nothing. Carolina on the riddle tractor goal from John Batsita. Here's Petrantonio, a shot, save, loose on the far side, rebound opportunity, Cavalier, he finds it, and he smothers with 12.46. Left to go here in the first period, a fast start. Here at the Fairgrounds Arena, John Batsita has the Thunderbirds up 1-0. 12.46 to go in period number one. We're back to Winston-Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. 12.46 remaining here in the first period over Columbus. John Batsita has now scored the last three goals for the Thunderbirds, his 16th of the season. Coming at the 7-0-1 mark with an assist from Dawson Baker as Batsita now up to 39 points here this season. A beautiful move after Dawson Baker was able to hold the puck at the near half board. Saw Batsita coming off the bench. Went right through a man and was able to snap one high over the blocker. So one nothing Carolina here early on at home. The Thunderbirds this season, 23-2-1. Here at the Fairgrounds Arena, one of those two losses coming against this River Dragons team back on December 30th. Face off to the right of Cavalieri, goes to the half board. Salak steps in, takes it away. Josh Petrantonio goes down to one knee. Salak spins near side, trying to slide it to Kramer. It gets kicked by Cody Wickline to Kirk Underwood, and Petrantonio re-enters the zone. He chases after James Farmer into the far corner. Now joining is Cody Wickline at the far half boards. Petrantonio trying to get it back out to the point, but Yuri Pestuka got a touch to it. Yoni backhands it over to Roman Kramer. Underwood pinches down. Wickline takes it away. Goes far side. Petrantonio, top of the slot. A shot. Goes off of the post. Cavalieri reaches behind him and is able to smother here at 12-14. Left to go on the first. Petrantonio, who's got 28 goals this season, just inches away from getting his 29th. Mario Cavalieri's had to make some big saves there that time. One of his best friends helping him out with the left post. So it remains a 1-0 game. And a face-off to Cavalieri's left. Face-off. It's won by Carolina. Tucker Firth banks it over to Clay Keeling. 
Goes far side, threw it behind his twin brother, Nate Nolan Slahetka at the red line. Dumps it back in. 12 minutes to go here in the first period. It's a 1-0 Thunderbirds lead thanks to John Batista's goal. Here's more. A shot in that one. Might have gotten deflected, and it goes out of play into the protective netting. Ryan Moore was just signed today. He was signed to a PTO. Played for the Thunderbirds a few years ago. Spent a lot of time in the penalty box. He's had some good opportunities here offensively early on. Another face off the Cavalier. He's right. It's one, two more. Near side, Jordan Popoff. He winds and fires, whiffs on the slap shot. And Chris Siolik picks it up. Siolik makes the pass back out to the neutral zone. Popoff battling for it. And then Schnapp exchange shoulders as Slahetka fires it over far side. It's kicked down by Kyle Moore. Moore, a first-team all-star. His pass got deflected, but Brian Moore picks it back up, fires it over far side. Moore walking in behind the D. Cavalier reaches out with the stick and pokes it away. Another terrific move and save by Mario Cavalier, who's on here early against Columbus. Pass goes in to the River Dragons bench. They'll bring a face off in the neutral zone with 11.16 to go here in the first period. Columbus this season, 18-6 and two. Away from the Columbus Civic Center. Face off at center ice is won by Alexander Jemayev. Carter Shinkrook on the near side. Fires it to Jemayev. His pass got knocked down by Keplinger. Keplinger trying to dance past Shinkrook. Those two tangle up and Layton he has it on the far side. Goes back in to Shinkaruk, who shovels it along to Alexander Jemayev, who clears the zone. Gordon Whalen gloves it down. He'll dump this one in off of the end boards, and Colgan will get a touch as Shinkaruk, with Batita closing, plays it on the near side. Alex Storjohn couldn't hang on to it. Josh Keplinger shovels it along, but Parker Lane, he takes it on the far side. Layton looking for a stretch pass. Threw it behind Alex Storjohn as Gordon Whalen collects once again. Finds Keplinger, and the Thunderbirds dump it in. Layton. Fires it over far side. There's Sequoia Swan. He brings it back behind the goal line. Baker pressuring him. Baker shoved him off the puck. Shinkaruk got it, though, and got it right back to Sequoia Swan. 10.20 to go. Here in the first period, it's a 1-0 Thunderbirds lead. Still in the attacking zone. Columbus finally able to clear as Jemayev. He'll dump this one in, and James Farmer, he picks it up. Stretch pass up to Roman Kramer. Kramer stood up by Cody Wickline, and now here comes Columbus. Wickline up the near side, looking for an option. A nice job, though, by James Former, closing him down. As now Yuri Pasuka goes the other way, one on two. Pasuka tried to get to the outside. Took a big hit from Kirk Underwood as Wickline tries to clean it up. Kramer takes it away. Kramer's trying to find Pasuka on the near side, threw it out in front of him. Pasuka gets to it eventually. He gets tangled up. Salant comes in to try to take it away as the puck ricochets behind the net, and Nathan Balkwill. But Kramer closing as his pass intercepted. Kramer to Pasuka, keeps it in at the far blue line. He's got Hunter Bersani on him as now four guys tangle up. Petrantonio trying to come in and take it away from Salak, who has it tied up at the kick point. Bersani finally gets rid of it. Clay Keeley over to Justin Bione. He'll just dump this one in. 9.20 to go here in the first period. It's a 1 0 lead for Carolina. There's Jacob Schnapp backhands one in on Colgan, and he has to cover. Here at 9 13 remaining in the first period. Carolina still with the one to nothing lead. A couple of close calls for Columbus. But Mario Cavalieri has been good so far this evening. One to nothing. Carolina over the midway mark here in period number one. Back with more from Winston Salem after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey everybody, my name is Zach Taylor, owner of Little Donuts. We're a donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts. We travel around to different events and festivals all over, including here at the Annex at every home hockey game. So next time you're out supporting your favorite hockey team. Come by our trailer and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts or by the Salem concession stand and get one of our specialty coffees or smoothies. Hope to see everyone around. Thank you and go birds. Nine thirteen remains in the first period. 
at the Fairgrounds Arena, Carolina, with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons, thanks to John Batita's 16th of the season at the 701 mark with an assist from Dawson Baker. Batita, he only had 14 goals last year, now up to 16 for the Cleveland, Ohio native. Shots on goal here early on. In game one of three this weekend. Our 13 to six in favor of the River Dragons and our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Decent crowd here on a Thursday evening. Not a sellout tonight. Getting close to a sellout coming up tomorrow and a face off in the attacking zone for the Thunderbirds is one, a shot from the point by Kennedy. Somehow Colgan saw it through traffic and was able to make a save with the glove. Joe Kennedy named a first-team All-Star this week. Points in each of his last three, including goals in two of those. Face-off to the left of Colgan. Nate Keeley wins it. Kennedy will dump this one in. Slahetka and Seolik battle for it. Slahetka angles him off. Jordan Popoff over to Kyle Moore. Up to Brian Moore, but too far out in front of him. As now Kennedy go the short way to Chris Seolik. Had it poked away by Nolan Slahetka. Here comes up. Right down Broadway, Kyle Moore trying to get to the backhand out in front. A nice shot by Kennedy, though. Being able to shoulder him off. And Cavalieri covers with 8.45 remaining in the first. Cavalieri 5-0-1 since his return from the SPHL with the Peoria Rivermen. 4-1 against the River Dragons this year. On the other side, Brendan Colgan, 2-1-1 against Carolina this season. Face off the Cavaliers right. Columbus wins it out at the point. Parker Lane goes to the far hand boards. Here's a one-timer from Sorjahan that Cavalier saves and his mask comes off. Play is stopped here with 8.36 remaining in the first. It's only the second head-to-head -head matchup this season between these two netminders. First one came back on December 23rd. That was a 6-3 victory for the Thunderbirds. Face off to Cavaliers left, and they will toss out Josh Keplinger. Keplinger back after he did not play last weekend. 37 points this season for the Saginaw Michigan native. So now they wait again. Austin Baker and Alexander Jameev. In at the dot. Face off. Goes into the corner. Justin Bioni goes far side to James Former. Slides it out to Josh Kevlinger. Saucer it over to John Batita at the red line. Fires it back over far side off of the boards. Kevlinger runs it down. Gets past Layton. Kevlinger on the back end. On the near side, goes to the forehand, banks a pass out to Bioni. Bioni throws one through traffic and got deflected. Shinkurik got a piece of it as it went wide on the near side. Batita closes off Parker Layton, but now it's up to Alex Sorjahan. Gets to center ice, so we'll dump this one in on the back end. Bioni and Jay Krupp into the corner. Bioni dances away from him as Krupp loses his stick and backhands it out to Batita in the neutral zone. Far side to Dawson Baker. Baker gets past Underwood. He gets tangled up. The hand goes up. A delayed penalty coming up against Columbus as Carolina is going to go to the power play for the first time this evening. It'll be Kirk Underwood going off for two minutes for hooking. It was 7.50 remaining in the first, and Carolina gets its first chance at a little Italy power play this evening. They are 23% on the power play this year. That is fourth in the FBHL. On the other side, Columbus, the best penalty kill at 87%. A faceoff comes to the right of Brendan Colgan. Bersani and Kevlinger for the draw. Faceoff goes to the half board. Slahetka gets to it, and he's able to clear. That's how the first power play of the evening for Carolina gets underway. Yuri Pastuka throws it just past Hunter Bersani. Dawson Baker up to Yuri Pastuka through center ice. Pastuka will enter the zone. Chips it along, evades a hit from Popoff. Salak to Keblinger right behind the net. Dancing out on the near side, out to the point. Dawson Baker to Keplinger, out to the point. Pass got deflected. And it clears the zone as Pastuka. He'll collect Columbus in the midst of a change. Salak throws it to Roman Kramer. Here's Kramer on the near side. Kramer, he waits, goes far side. Looking for an option. 
Far corner. His best one is Jan Salak. Salak. Down low to Keplinger. Remember, no Gus Ford, no Justin McDonald tonight for either side. A saucer pass goes off of the leg of Kramer. Keplinger got it right back. Finally gets the pass over to Baker. To Kramer, top of the slot. A shot and a save with the blocker by Colgan. Slahetka in the corner. We'll clear this one. It went out of play, though. It looks like it went off of a river dragon on the bench. So that should bring a face off in the attacking zone for Carolina. No penalty, though. 47 seconds remain on the power play for Carolina. They're still looking for their first shot, or rather their second shot. Second unit out there on this power play for Carolina. It'll be John Batita for the Dragons. Alexander Jameyev to the left of Colgan. Batita wins it cleanly. Now to Tucker Firth. He's got Clay Keeley and gives it to him at the top of the zone. Keeley, far side. Batita, quick shot. And a save by Colgan. Siolik. Now to the point, Keeley far side to Tucker Firth. Firth finds Schnapp, top of the slot. Slides it over near side. Siolik had to settle it down. Siolik over to Firth, walking in a quick shot. And a glove saved by Colgan, who freezes with 6.15 to go here in the first and 25 seconds remaining on the power play. Tita and Jemayev once again. Tangle up, Schnapp comes in and he wins it. Schnapp out to the point, Firth. Back to Schnapp at the far half boards. Jemayev closing on him, trying to center one. Instead it was knocked down by Parker Layton. He's able to clear it down 200 feet and Schnapp able to finish off a good hit on him. Eight seconds remain on the power play for Carolina in the neutral zone. Ryan Hunter thinks the pass in. Out of the box is Kirk Underwood, and we're back to five on five. Carolina now 0 for 1 on the Little Italy power play this evening. John Betsita gets across the blue line, throws a pass off a of Hunter Skates, gets it back though, slides it near side. Firth will run it down to the half boards. And chip it in, Pastuka. Tangled up by Nathan Balkwill. Salak trying to poke it free. Instead, Ryan Hunter starts the other way. 71 points this season for Ryan Hunter. His pass intercepted by James Farmer. Farmer up the near side. He walks in and a save by Colgan. But 5.22 to go here in the first. Shots are now 15 to 12 on our contact LLC. Shots on goal tracker. Carolina surviving the early flurry from Columbus, but still a good chunk of time remaining in this first period. So locked for the draw. To left, Kramer will then bank it around. Slahetka chips it over far side to Brian Moore. He waits, trying to find Slahetka. Slahetka got a piece of it. Instead, Kyle Moore floats it out to the neutral zone, running it down. Ryan Hunter leaves it for Brian Moore at the blue line. Moore to the top of the slot, drops it off for Popov. His shot through traffic, didn't get all the way through. Quick shot, Slahetka sends it behind the net. Far side, Popov races over, keeps it in at the blue line. The battling puck goes off of the glass. Kramer. Lofts it back out in front of the benches and Pistuka on the back end. Had to get rid of it. Slahetko is closing and then an offside is called as the River Dragons did not get back on. 4.40 to go here in the first period. Carolina still with the one to nothing lead here over the Columbus River Dragons. We're back with more in the conclusion of the first after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pine Brook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18-hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Number one, and it's the Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons. John Batita, his goal, only one standing so far here in this one. Both netminders have been tested here early on. Mario Cavalieri has had to make some terrific saves here so far this evening. 
Don't forget, game two coming up tomorrow at 7.35 p.m. Eastern. Pre-game cover starting at 7.05 here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOV. For game two or three here this weekend, and then the regular season finale comes up on Saturday in Columbus. Face-off in front of the Thunderbirds bench. Right outside at their defensive zone. Josh Petrantonio wins it. Carter Shinkrickle try to rattle it in. It went off of a stanchion, and Cavalieri settles it down for Tucker Firth. Slides it over far side. Keplinger looking for options. Throws it in to space on the near side. And let's Justin Bioni race after it. Fired it up to Batita. He got a piece of it. Columbus won an icing, but the captain did get a touch to it. Parker Layton playing in his seventh game here this evening. Goes far side to Alex Sorjahan, who finds Shinkarook. He forgot it for a second. Hand goes up for a delayed offside, and then they eventually do call it. So we'll bring another faceoff in front of the Thunderbirds bench here with 4.09 remaining in the first. Cavalier wins the draw, battling against Petrantonio, though. Petrantonio got a piece of it. As Cavalieri had to get a deflection. Bioni tried to clear. It took a ricochet off of a stanchion. Went out in front of the net, but now Petita trying to run it down. Petita trying to step through late, and we got to stick to it. Cavalier picks it up, though. Quick shot. Oh, he hit the bar. Firth, he gets it. Throws it behind the net. Petita gloves it down, chips it along. Him and Petrantonio battling. Baker trying to get it back out to the point. But Tucker Firth has to go back to collect. Kaplinger hitting the corner. Colgan never saw it. He just went right over his shoulder. Three and a half to go here in the first period. one nothing. Carolina in front. Justin Vioni on the near side. Tried to center it. And said Alex Storjohn takes it over at the far half. Wards Vioni tries to deliver a hit on him. And he got rid of it up to Alexander Jameev. Walks up the near side. Dropped it off for Jay Krupp. Krupp far dot. Quick shot. And that one got deflected into the protective netting. Here with 3-10 remaining in the first. So both sides have now rang iron. Josh Petrantonio hitting the post earlier on in the first. And Josh Keplinger just hitting the iron as well. Faceoffs won by Jamaev at the point, trying to settle it down as Paul Quill zips it to Underwood, who throws it hard off of the half boards. Jamaev closed off by Gordon Whalen. And Nate Keeley finds it. Up to Chris Seal. It got rid of it at the last second. And Jacob Schnapp. Schnapp dances to the inside in the attacking zone. Tried to throw it to Whalen, who now will fire one far side. Seal chipping it along. Schnapp. He has it on the forehand. Finds Nate Keeley, a bouncing puck. Jay Krupp intercepted a pass. Is now him and Schnapp go into the corner. Krupp a quick touch to Underwood. Balkwill delivers it right back. Underwood thanks the pass all the way out. And this will go for icing with 2.31 remaining here on the first. Face off to Colgan's right. Salak and Jamea for the draw. Those two, they leave it still there. Pastuka trying to take it away. He got taken down to the ground and it's backhanded all the way towards Mario Cavalier. And Tucker Firth, his defenseman, will pick it up and hold behind the net. 2.15 to go here in the first period. Here on a Thursday evening in Winston-Salem, Carolina 23-2-1 here at home this season. Pastuka had trouble with it in the neutral zone. Brian Moore takes it the other way. Moore almost runs into Kyle Moore. Goes to the forehand. Goes far side. Slahetka chips it behind the net. Brian Hunter tried to shovel it along. Instead, Jan Salak got a piece of it. Joe Kennedy tried to clear. Pastuka did as well. and said it sent right back into the far corner. Pastuka goes tumbling hard into the glass. As Firth finds Kramer. Fires a bank over far side to Bistuka. Carolina struggling to get out of their own defensive zone right now. They finally do, but Salak left it at the blue line, and Kyle Moore is right back in. Him and Pistuka deliver blows to each other as Popoff trying to settle down the bouncing puck. We'll dump this one in. 
Under 90 seconds to go here in the first period. Joe Kennedy far side to Dawson Baker trying to give a return pass that it's intercepted. Salak gets tangled up with both Moores as Kyle Moore goes down to the ground. Now here comes Joe Kennedy. Kennedy up the near side finds Baker a shot. That one's blocked by Slahetka and it went all the way to the end boards. Baker far side. Kennedy at the half boards. He waits. Throws one behind the net. Petzita. Circling, one minute to go here in the first. Peone far side, Joe Kennedy, a quick snapshot, got saved by Colgan. The rebound was still loose, and the officials wave it dead. Keblinger was right on the doorstep. As Colgan, he never had that one completely. And after the play, Baker and Kyle Moore exchanging some pleasantries. Fifty-three point eight left to go here in what has been a back and forth first period. Shots are fifteen to thirteen. Our Comtech LLC shots on goal. Tracker to Carolina with an attacking zone draw to the left of Brendan Colgan, Keplinger and Petrantonio in, and Keplinger is tossed out of the dot. That brings in Baker. Carolina wins it. Keplinger though. Left it behind him. Petrantonio went for the stretch pass to Sequoia Swan. Threw it out in front of him. It's Cavalieri. Banks a pass off of the end boards to James Farmer. Too much on the clearing attempt. It's a foot race now down. They wave off icing as they said Petito was in behind Shinkarook. Those two now. They tangle up. Pass gets thrown off of the glass before Cody Wickline tries to clear. He can as Kevlier kept it in at the blue line. 25 seconds to go here in the first period. Cody Wickline on the near side. And Baker closing, threw it out to the neutral zone as James Farmer, he waits. Farmer throws it right in on Colgan, it's still loose. Keplinger gets to the rebound. Keplinger trying to throw it out in front. Layton went down to a knee to block it. And it said it's ramped over near his side. A good hit there by James Farmer on Cody Wickline with five seconds and four. And that will do it for period number one. The arena crowd. Coming to its feet after the first 20 minutes, John Vazita at the 7:01 mark here in period number one as the Thunderbirds ahead over the Columbus River Dragons by a score of one to nothing after 20 minutes of action here this evening. A high-flying matchup so far here between the top two teams in the Continental Division. And there's more to come here from Winston-Salem in just a little bit. But we've reached the first intermission here at the Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina leading Columbus one to nothing. The first intermission report is coming up next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill. Relax by our pool and cabana and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Riddle Tractor has been selling and servicing tractors, mowers, and more for over 43 years. We stock over 50,000 parts and we service what we sell. Visit us at RiddleTractor.com. That's RiddleTractor.com. Equipping those who get the job done. Scott Brandon with DS Brandon Plumbing. I have 30 years of plumbing experience in the triad. DSBPCO at triad.rr.com. Proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. Go Birds. Hi, I'm Wake Wagner with Wagner Appliance, proud supporter of the Thunderbirds. We're a retailer of new used and scratch and dent appliances. Um, our prices do include delivery, installation, all the cords and hoses for most things that we sell. We are also a proud servicer of most of your major brands. Go Birds!
Back here in Winston-Salem, we've reached the first intermission here on a Thursday evening at the Fairgrounds Arena. It's the Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons after the first 20 minutes of action. This game got off to a fast start. Columbus, like they always have, putting the pressure on early, but Mario Cavalieri has had to stand to the test. It started early on, a point-blank opportunity twice for Brian Moore. That Cavalieri made himself big and was able to keep out. That made it, that kept it a scoreless game there early on. After that, Cavalieri went behind his net and misplayed a puck. And right out in front, Columbus had an opportunity. Wide open net and Cavalieri reaching around, almost supermaning out in front to knock it away and be able to keep it scoreless there. They also, with Josh Petrantonio, had hit the post at one point. So Cavalieri, only as he had to make some terrific saves in the first, he also got a little help from his best friend. On the other side, for Carolina, after the early flurry for Columbus, they were able to settle into this game. And with about 6.50 gone there in the first period, Dawson Baker, with Columbus in the midst of a change, was able to wait at the half boards. He was able to wait and wait and find John Batita coming off the bench who danced through one man and snapped one past the blocker of Brendan Colgan to give Carolina the one to nothing advantage at the 7.01 mark there in period number one. After that, Carolina would go to the power play after Kirk Underwood was calling for a hooking minor at the 12.10 mark in period number one. This. River Dragons penalty kill though, the best in the league at 87% and Carolina not able to find the back of the net on the power play after coming in at 23% here this season. Carolina did get some good looks though. Brendan Colgan had to make some big saves though. And it kept it a one nothing game and that is where we stand after 20 minutes of action here this evening. Taking a look at the net miners, talked about them a lot. Taking a look at the shots on goal that they've had to face. Columbus 15, Carolina with 14 in our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Colgan saving 14 out of 15. Mario Cavalieri has saved all 14 he's seen this evening. With that goal from John Batita, the assist went to Dawson Baker as well. For Batita, his 16th goal this season, and for Baker, his 38th assist. Batita. Only had 14 goals last year. He's now scored the last three goals for the Thunderbirds, dating back to the final five minutes of last Saturday's game where he got two quickly after that. So now it's a 16 and 39 points this season for John Batita. Dawson Baker gets his 38th assist and now 69 points for him after he was named the Continental Division First Team All-Star earlier on this week. Baker now at points in 17 out of 20 in seven out of his last nine. Also, with that goal from John Batista, this is the ninth matchup this season between Carolina and Columbus. That was the 26th goal scored in the first period across the nine matchups here this season. Both these sides have had flurries early on. They've had terrific matchups all season long. Both sides with four wins. Carolina with two coming in overtime or shootout. And on the other side, Columbus with one in the overtime or shootout. Carolina trying to snap a two-game losing streak here against the Columbus River Dragons here in the final weekend of the regular season. Tonight, game 54 for the Thunderbirds, and the playoffs are right around the corner. Playoffs are already set in the Continental Division. Carolina will be facing off against Port Huron, while Columbus will have the Mississippi Seawolves. Columbus has to go to Biloxi next Friday while Carolina will be in Port Huron as well. That's a 7.05 puck drop for Carolina and Port Huron game one. And it'll be 7.35 for game two next Saturday. And then the, if necessary, game three on Sunday will not be the usual 4.05 Sunday start, but it'll be a 6.05 Sunday start here at the Fairgrounds Arena, but also that game, if necessary, if either Port Huron or Carolina are able to take care of business across the first two games. But right now, here after 20 minutes in Winston-Salem, Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons, thanks to John Batidas, 16th of the season. Thunderbirds, one nothing lead, one of the game in the FPHL tonight. We'll update you on that one here in just a little bit. We'll also take a look at the final weekend as well. Exciting time for hockey, give you updates on the Frozen Four, as well as the Stanley Cup playoffs starting 
coming up in just about nine days or so. We'll give you a scoreboard for around the rest of the hockey world coming up on the other side of this timeout, this Thunderbirds hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru, and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Huey. Nothing. Carolina the lead after 20 minutes here in Winston-Salem. John Batista's goal at the 701 mark. The difference right now between these two sides after 20 minutes in the first of three here this weekend. Take a look around the rest of the FPHL. One other game tonight. That's between Mississippi and Baton Rouge coming up here in just a few minutes or so from the Raising Canes River Center. Baton Rouge finishing out their first season in the FPHL. Mississippi, they have a date with Columbus in the first round of the Commissioner's Cup playoff next weekend. Take a look at the rest of the weekend coming up here. Motor City and Port Huron meet for the 18th time tomorrow at 7.05 p.m. Eastern from McMorrin Arena. Watertown and Blue Ridge from the Apex Center. First time those two sides uh, are seeing each other in Whitfield in their franchise of history. Binghamton and Danbury with Carolina and Columbus at 7.35 once again tomorrow evening. And Mississippi and Baton Rouge from the Raising Kings River Center. Let's look at the games coming up tomorrow evening here in the FPHL. Exciting time for hockey, though. You got the Frozen Four college hockey there. And the Frozen Four up in Minneapolis, up in St. Paul at the Excel Center. And one team's already booked its trip to the national championship game. Denver taking down Boston University. That's the 3-2 matchup in overtime there at the XL Center as the Denver Pioneers are making their way to the national championship game. The winner, or Denver, will play the winner of Michigan and the top-seeded Boston College Eagles, which is coming up at 9, 10 p.m. Eastern. So now Boston College, Boston University, national championship, like I know so many college hockey fans want it. Take a look at scores around the NHL here this evening. We do have an extended intermission here tonight due to the ice. And the 22 minutes for intermissions here this evening. So we take a look at the uh, scores from the NHL. Games in action right now. There are plenty. Capitals trailing the Buffalo Sabres by a score of 2-1 with 344 to go there in the second period. It's a 4-3 lead for the Toronto Maple Leafs over the New Jersey Devils with 8.07 to go in uh, period number two there up in Toronto. Tampa Bay Lightning. They got a 2-1 advantage over the Ottawa Senators down in Tampa. 8.28 to go in the second there. 
the Florida Panthers leading the Columbus Blue Jackets one to nothing at two and a half to go in the second period. The Flyers leading the Rangers at Madison Square Garden two to one, 8.50 to go in the second period there. And that Metropolitan Division matchup. Pittsburgh and Detroit there at the 839 mark, or with 839 to go in the second period there. The Penguins have a 3-2 lead over the Detroit Red Wings. Sidney Crosby got his 41st of the season. They're through 20 minutes in uh, Long Island, and it's the Montreal Canadiens with a 1-0 lead over the New York Islanders. And then they're in the first period with 5-13 remaining from Dallas, Texas. And as the Dallas Stars and Winnipeg Jets scoreless, they're... 15 minutes into the first there. The late games coming up from the West Coast this evening from the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle. The Kraken and Sharks will battle at 10 p.m. And then from the Crypto.com Arena in downtown Los Angeles, it's the L.A. Kings and the Calgary Flames. Let's look around the NHL here this evening and taking a look at the standings here in the FPHL. And he's set for the playoffs. Still one playoff spot up for grabs. And that is in the Empire Division. Elmira with 60 points on the season. Watertown, though, a game in hand, trailing by two points. Elmira, one more game left in the regular season. Watertown has two. With Elmira. Elmira is stagnant tomorrow night with Watertown playing for their lives at the Apex Center coming up tomorrow. Elmira will then be in Binghamton on Saturday while Watertown gets Blue Ridge for two here this weekend. As it looks right now in the Empire Division, the 2-3 matchup still not deciding who's going to get home ice advantage in that one. Motor City still with two games against Port here on. They have 91 points. Dan Barry finishing up their regular season against Binghamton tomorrow night, trailing by two points. So that will be interesting to see if Motor City can pick up points or if Dan Barry gets a win in regulation and if Motor City ends up not picking up a win, then Dan Barry could potentially be the higher seed for their round one matchup. So it's all coming down to the final weekend. You got Elmira and Watertown battling for the final playoff spot. Motor City and Danbury battling for home ice advantage. But the Continental Division's all ramped up. Columbus and Mississippi, Port Huron, and Carolina. And here in this one, Carolina with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. We reset things for the start of period number two. Coming up on the other side of this timeout, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Hey, Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds.
Back here at the Fairgrounds Arena, Carolina with the one to nothing lead after 20 minutes of action here this evening. We're at the first intermission here in Winston-Salem. And John Batita right now, the difference here in this one, the assist coming from Dawson Baker at the 7.01 mark here in period number one. We had one penalty to talk about there in the first period. That was Kirk Underwood who was calling for a hooking minor call. Columbus was able to kill off that penalty, and now for the Thunderbirds, they now try to be able to take control in this game in the second period. It is a 15 to 14 advantage on the shots in favor of Columbus. On our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Brendan Colgan has saved 14 out of 15. On the other side, Mario Cavalieri has saved all 14 shots that he's seen this evening. And for the Thunderbirds, Trying to keep pace with Binghamton for the number two overall seed in the FPHL. Columbus has already ramped things up for the home ice advantage and the regular season champions. And now the Thunderbirds. Trying to pick up their fifth one here against the River Dragons this season. Carolina with the one to nothing lead here over the Columbus River Dragons, if you're just joining us, remember no Gus Ford and no Justin McDonald here this evening. McDonald, the goal leader, assist leader, point leader in the FPHL with 43, 70, and 113. Gus Ford with 42 goals, 46 assists, and 88 points for the reigning FPHL MVP. The awards have slowly started to trickle out from the FPHL. Dawson Baker, Joe Kennedy, and Peter Vanacek, Continental Little Vision first team all stars. Roman Kramer, a first team uh, rookie all star. So Thunderbirds doing well here early on on the, getting the regular season hardware. Head coach Steve Harrison making his way back to his bench. Jerome Bashar is already back out for the start of the second period as the officials have made their way back out onto the ice. And both sides getting ready to come out of their respective locker rooms. The second period is coming up next. Carolina leads one to nothing. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey, welcome to Gatsby's Pub, your official after-game venue for the Carolina Thunderbirds. After the home games, come visit Brent. Hi, I'm Brent. Go Birds! Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with BFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Hey everybody, my name is Zach Taylor, owner of Little Donuts. We're a donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts. We travel around to different events and festivals all over, including here at the Annex at every home hockey game. So next time you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, come by our trailer and warm up with some hot fresh apple cider mini donuts or by the Salem concession stand and get one of our specialty coffees or smoothies. Hope to see everyone around. Thank you and go Burts. Second period, ready to go here from the Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina, one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons. Thanks to John Batita's 16th of the year at the 701 mark. We welcome you into the second period, which is brought to you by Flow Automotive. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Dylan Klein and Jack O'Connell working behind the scenes 
here at the Fairgrounds Arena. We got Rick O'Neill, the radio guy, back in our WTOB studios. Jamea and Salak for the draw to get things started in the second as we're underway here in the middle 20 in the period of the long change with Carolina controlling first and Roman Kramer dumping the puck in on the near side in the attacking zone. Pasuka trying to rattle it all the way over to far side. Shinkarook whacked at it and it's poked free up to Jamea in front of the benches. Alexander Jamea at the far side gets to the forehand. Quick shot blockered away by Cavalier. Rebound attempt from late and goes wide on the near side. Jamea out to the point. Shinkarook a quick one-timer. That one sails off of the blocker of Cavalier and into the protective netting. Here, just 26 seconds into the second period. Columbus likes to do this, and they've done it really all season against the Thunderbirds. They get off to fast starts in each period. Carolina able to hold off the flurry in the first here today. Looking for a little bit of a better start here in the second. Kaplinger in for the draw against. Cody Wickline to the left of Cavalieri. Face off into the corner. Joe Kennedy sends it to Tucker Firth. Near side, Dawson Baker tried to find John Batita. Shin Kruk angled him off, though, and they wave off icing as Parker Layton back hands it to his D partner, Shin Kruk. Jamaev at the red line. Dumps it in. Cavalieri leaves it for Tucker Firth. Wickline closing on him. He got rid of it to Joe Kennedy. Up the far side has John Batita. Jamaev trying to close him down. A bouncing puck. Sequoia Swan takes it away. It's Cody Wickline in the attacking zone. He had no options as Columbus was in the midst of a change. And the Thunderbirds are able to control. Just over a minute gone here in the second period in Winston-Salem. Thunderbirds a one to nothing lead here over the River Dragons. Keblinger left the puck behind him. Brian Moore now to Kyle Moore. Snaps it far side. Pop off far side. A quick shot from Hunter. Cavalieri got back to his left post. And it goes out of play. So a turnover almost costly there for the Thunderbirds. With 18.42 to go here in the second period. Faceoff comes to the left of Mario Cavalieri. Nate Keeley and Ryan Hunter for the draw. Keeley wins it to Justin Bioni. Starts up the far side. Trying to slide one to Chris Siolink too far out in front of him. And Slahetka wins the foot race and icing is called. So Columbus will stick with the same five. Carolina, of course, can't change. It'll be Schnapp, Nate Keeley, James Farmer, Chris Siolink, and Justin Bioni. Five in black. Ryan Hunter wins the draw out to the point. Pop off. Cycle this one around. Nate Keeley in front of the Zamboni doors. Throws a pass off with the skates of Kyle Moore. James Farmer over to Justin Bioni. He's looking for the stretch pass. Flips it all the way down. This goes for icing again. So consecutive icings for, this, for these five. Siolik a little winded, making his way back to the dot. 18-14 to go here in the second period. 1-0 Carolina. Nate Keeley, Josh Petrantonio comes in on Cavalieri. He paddles it away behind the net. Farmer from a knee finds Bioni. Goes the short way this time to Schnapp, who banks it all the way back out. This isn't going to have enough for icing as Nathan Bulkwill. He brings it behind the net. Near side's Alex Storjahan sends it right back to Nathan Balkwill here with over two minutes gone here in the second period here on a rainy Thursday night in Winston-Salem. Clay Keeley at the blue line. Fires over far side to Yuri Pistuka. Pistuka, quick shot. Got deflected to the end boards. Balkwill near side to Alex Storjahan. He chips it along. And back to pick it up is Gordon Whalen in the corner. Whalen. Trying to backhand it along. He got knocked down for a second. Pastuka finally got to it, cleared the zone before Petrantonio goes cross corner. Clay Keeley and Hunter Bersani, they battle for it. Quick shot. That one goes off of the post and behind the net. Storjohn picks up, throws it out in front. You may have the point blank opportunity, and Cavalieri makes the save. 
couple of times that Columbus has been right on the doorstep. Cavalieri, though, standing tall so far. As now it looks like Nathan Balkwell needs help getting back to, rather, excuse me, Hunter Bersani needs help heading back to his bench. Seventeen oh nine to go here in the Flow Automotive second period. Been a choppy start. The face off to the left of Cavalier. It'll be Keplinger for the draw for Carolina. Cody Wickline though wins it out to the point. Parker Layton and lost his stick. That's crew. Layton walks in and saved by Cavalier. He saw it the whole way. There's no one in the slot. Goals this season now between these two sides are tied at 31. It's the ninth meeting this season. Kevlinger wins the draw and goes into the corner. Firth rattles it back out. Petita trying to run it down. Layton kept it in the zone. Got it to Jay Krupp who goes near side. Alexander Jemayev. Quick backhand pass. Wickline battling against Keplinger. Those two continue to go after it. Keplinger sends him to the ground. Picking it up. Those Krupp centers. It's Lehetka. A centering pass. Cavalieri somehow getting back to his left. And he's able to cover. Slahetka ended up not getting a lot on the shot, but it almost worked out as Jemayev was standing over on the far side. And so instead of a one-timer from Slahetka, it was more of a centering pass that Cavalieri was able to control as Jemayev, he couldn't settle it down. But here again is that flurry from Columbus, putting the pressure on here within the first five minutes. We're 3.20 in to the second period. Carolina is still the one to nothing lead. Shots are six to nothing here in this second period in favor of the River Dragons. Thunderbirds win the draw though. Chris Siolik gets to the red line and dump this one in. Slahenka trying to apply a hit on him, but whiffed. Schnapp to Nate Keeley. Keeley throws it into the corner. Parker Layton with two black sweaters closing. Got rid of it up to Kyle Moore. His pass got deflected by Seolt. Ricochets high in the air. Brian Moore runs it down. He waits on the back. He finds Hunter and a save by Cavalieri. Tried to beat him short side. And Cavalieri closed the window. In the corner now. Hunter takes it away. Kevin Farmer. They battle for it. It's Nate Keeley now. Goes cross ice, throws it off of the boards in front of the River Dragons bench, and it'll be dumped back in by Layton. This line's been out there a lot here in this second period. Comprising of Nate Keeley is now Justin Bioni and Ryan Hunter. They being told to settle down as they were changing a few shows right at the top of Mario Cavalieri's crease. And it looks like both are going to go off for their extracurriculars. So Bioni and Hunter to the box. A little bit of a precaution maybe from the officials here. In this long and heated rivalry between Carolina and Columbus. Both are given two minutes. And we'll have four on four. So they both get roughing calls here at the 413 mark. And with 1547 to go here in the second. We'll have four on four for the next two minutes. Faceoff comes to the defensive zone to the right of Mario Cavalieri. It will be Brian Moore and Jan Salak for the draw. Moore wins it. When he goes past Nathan Balkwill and go all the way back down as Jordan Popoff has to go and race after it. Yuri Pastuka closing on him. He left the puck, stepping in to take it away, though, is Nathan Balkwill. Slides it right back to Popoff. Popoff will spin back behind the cage. And start at the far side to Brian Moore. Moore fakes the pass across the Thunderbirds logo. Got to the blue line there on side, but it doesn't matter as they lost the puck. And Joe Kennedy now, now gets... Tangled up with Moore. Pastuka battling for it, and Salak takes it away. Here comes Jan Salak up the near side. Salak 
Spinning at the half, Ford gets away from it. Quick shot from Kennedy and a save by Colgan. Now to the point, Keplinger floats it away. It's intercepted though, and now here comes Brian Moore. Moore with Kyle Moore, and a nice shot by Keplinger getting back, and Cavalier is able to cover. But Keplinger is going to be going off for two minutes. There are 14.56 left to go here in the second. We'll have four on three for the next minute and nine seconds. But Josh Keplinger going the box for two minutes for hooking. So Carolina with some work to do. Penalty kill is going to be out there for a little bit when we come back. one nothing Thunderbirds over the River Dragons. With 14.56 to go in the second. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 Hall Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at MapleChaseCC.com. That's MapleChaseCC.com. Six to go here in period number two. Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead over the Columbus River Dragons here in the first of three this weekend in the final weekend of the regular season. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, 7.35, puck drop back here at home for game two. And then the two sides will make the six, seven-hour trip down to Columbus for game three at 7.05 from the Columbus Civic Center on Saturday. Carolina, work to do, though, on the penalty kill. It'll be four on three for the next minute and nine seconds. Then it'll be 51 seconds of five on four. You got Justin Vioni and Ryan Hunter both in the box for two minutes for roughing. And then Josh Keplinger was just calling for a hook after he had to get back after a turnover at his own blue line and a breakaway two-on-one opportunity for Columbus. Keplinger got the hook, but it ended up working out as Carolina kept the puck out of the back of the net, but now the penalty kill is going to be taxed here for the next two minutes. Columbus this season, 28% on the power play, then second. Carolina's penalty kill, 79%. Faceoff is won by Columbus. Cody Wickline, though, loses it to Joe Kennedy, spins away from him in the back end, chips it up to Jacob Schnapp, who now has some time. He lost it, though, but was able to clear the zone. Schnapp racing after it, takes it away from Carter Shinkrook and sends it all the way back to Joe Kennedy. A good start here on the penalty kill for Carolina with 14.35 to go here in the second period. Kennedy taking his time, snaps it all the way off of the leg of Carter Shinkrook. Pastuco is behind him trying to lift his stick and almost have a chance on the shorthand. The far side, Shinkrook into the attacking zone. He waits, saucers it over to Josh Petrantoni. And remember, no Gus Ford for Carolina and no Justin McDonald for Columbus. Shinkrook, far side to Alex Storjahan. He looks, tries to center one to Wick. Line goes off of the skate of Tucker Firth and Pastuco will clear. 20 seconds to go, a four on three. Then it'll be 51 seconds, a five on four and fit for Columbus. Up the far side, Petra Antonio drops it back. Far half boards. It's Cody Wickline out to the point. Shinkrook quickly over to Petra Antonio. Centering pass, here's Wickline in the slot. Backhand far side, a shot and a save by Cavalieri as he's able to stone Alex Sorgehan. Cavalieri has been terrific so far this evening. Getting the start here tonight. He's made acrobatic saves. He's made strong saves. And has kept it a 1-0 game. Bioni and Hunter getting ready to come out of the box with three seconds. Faceoff is won by Columbus. Both of them out of the box. Five on four now for the next 50 seconds. Near side. Kyle Moore. Out to the point with Slahetka, right back to Moore at the near half boards. Moore searching, he's looking. Slahetka back at the top of the zone, goes far side to Brian Moore. Moore on the forehand, near side, Moore settles it down. Kyle Moore tries to go back to Brian Moore. Clay Keeley got a piece of it and said Ryan Hunter picks it up. Out to Slahetka at the point, 25 to go here on the penalty kill. Shot goes wide, Cavalieri never saw it, far side, it goes to the links of Brian Moore. Out to the point, Slahetka. Back to Moore, one-timer, and that one sails high. Ricochets around the glass, near his side. Kyle Moore and Schnapp battle for it. Schnapp takes it away, and he clears. It was six seconds to go on the Kevlinger hooking call. Carolina kills off. The power play. 
Back to five on five here. With 12.50 to go in the second. Tucker Firth disposed of Kyle Moore. Forgot the puck though. As now Chris Seal trying to settle things down. Leaves it for Joe Kennedy. Has to get rid of it quickly to Firth. Stretch pass out to the neutral zone to Keplinger. Up the far side. Keplinger tried to get away from Carter Shinkrook and said it rattled behind the board, or behind the net rather. And on the near side is Ryan Hunter. Hunter threw a pass off of the skates of Batita. He'll just snap this one back in here at 12.23 remaining in the second period. It's a 1-0 lead for Carolina. Pass gets deflected at center ice. Here's Keplinger. A quick shot. Sailed it wide on the near side. Batita trying to rattle it back to him. Instead, Shinkaru cuts it off. Dawson Baker, though, has it at the far half. Forwards finds Keplinger a shot. And that one he threw wide. Baker cycle it back in. Shinkaruk wins the positioning battle against Petzita. Alexander Jameev now gets it out of his own zone across the red line and all the way into the attacking zone. Dropping it off for Brian Moore. Trying to snap a pass far side. Just off of the bench is Hunter Bersani at the point. Pop off. As his pass ricochet. Jan Salak with some space. Jameev now closing on him. He clears his own, gets dragged to the ground. No hand goes up from either of the referees, and Jameev recollects and sends it back to Jordan Popoff. Popoff up to Bersani, and a good hit by James Former as he sends him down, tumbling to the ground. You can tell Bersani's hurting. He went off a little earlier, not under his own power. This one's starting to pick up a little bit here, the physicality as Pastuka trying to take it away from Popoff. Instead, Popoff got a touch to it at the last second. And Cavalieri instead controls behind his own. That throws a pass that's intercepted, thrown out in front. Sequoia Swan was trying to find Bersani and said it's saucered over near side. As now Paul Quill and Pesuka race after it into the corner. Pesuka kicks it along. Too much on it though for Jan Salak. Bersani just floats it out to Clay Keeley. We got 10.45 to go here in the second period. Here's Kramer up the far side, trying to drop it back for Pistuka. Balkwell got a touch. Pistuka now trying to settle down the bouncing puck. Shovels it along into the corner, and Balkwell and Salak. Jam up at the kick plate. Pokes free, and Jordan Popoff takes it away. Popoff with a spinning back in over to Sequoia Swan. Drops it right back to Popoff, who finds Petrantonio. His stretch pass, he was trying to find Bersani. Kicked away by Clay Keeley, and Kramer's right back in. Kramer up the far side, a quick shot. It's deflected by Balkwell and goes in the protective netting here at 10. 13 remaining in the second period. Shots are 10 to 1 in the second period in favor of Columbus. Yet the score remains 1 to nothing. Face off in the attacking zones won by Carolina. Kennedy races it down, rattles it over far side. Nate Keeley and Josh Petrantonio into the corner. Battling for it and coming away with it is Carter Shinkrook. Goes near side to Storjahan. He gets across the blue line, floats it over far side and behind Cody Wickline as Nate Keeley chips it back out to the neutral zone and Slahetka. He collects, banks the pass. Sioli. Kennedy at the near dot. Tried to dance through and said it's Cody Wickline in front of the penalty boxes. He loses it and Sioli dumps it back in. Nine and a half to go here in the Flow Automotive second period. Thunderbirds with a one to nothing lead thanks to John Batita's 16th of the year. Kennedy will just throw this one back in and the Thunderbirds forwards get off for a change and bring out Batita, Keplinger, and Baker. Slacka with some space trying to snap one to Petra Antonio. Too much on it. No icing though. It's Kennedy. It's a big hit from Wickline. Stays on his feet, though. Storjahan steps in, throws one off the back of the apron, and Josh Keplinger takes it away. Throws one off of the skates of Dawson Baker. Kennedy right back to Baker, and as it bounces off of his stick, nose. now Storjahan races after it. He's got Kyle Moore just off of the bench, trying to center one, and Tucker Firth ends up denying the pass. Parker Layton trying to settle it down. Baker, though, with a beautiful backhand find out to Batita. He's got Keplinger. Batita a shot, and that one goes high. Baker trying to keep it in at the point. Ryan Hunter just able to clear the zone. Keplinger can't settle it down. It's taken away by Kyle Moore. Here's Moore up the far side. Drops it off. Brian Moore, the lefty in the slot, waiting. Centers one. And a nice shot by Farmer, tangling up with Ryan Hunter. Else it could have been a 1-1 game. Farmer now. 
to Vitsita. Dances away from Moore. He's going off for a change. Baker goes tape to tape to Kaplinger. Threw it off of the face of Nathan Paul. Cool. Baker takes it away. Baker on the back end in the slot. Got his hand hit. A penalty coming up here against Columbus. Former a quick shot and a save by Colgan. Here with 8-13 remaining here in the second period. It's a 1-0 Thunderbirds lead. But Carolina is going to be going to the Little Italy power play when we come back. A slashing call against Parker Layton will send the Thunderbirds to the power play for the second time here this evening. 1-0 Carolina here with the midway mark in the second. Back with more after this from Winston-Salem. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. My name is Melissa Pilson and I'm with Brianna Phillips. We're the proud owners of the Pet Barn. We've been in business for over 22 years. We offer boarding, grooming, and daycare. You can find us at 7844 Blues Creek Road. Message us on Messenger, Facebook, or contact us 336-451-7508. We are also proud sponsors of the Thunderbirds. What's the word? Thunderbirds! Carolina going to the power play for the second time this evening. All power plays this season are brought to you by Little Italy Pizza, but a 1-0 lead for Carolina. And it'll be Parker Layton going off for two minutes for slashing after Dawson Baker worked his way into the slot. So Carolina gets its second chance there. At a power play in the first period, Columbus able to kill it off. Now with 8.13 to go in the second, Carolina with the opportunity to try to double its advantage but facing the best penalty kill in the FPHL in this River Dragons team at 87%. Face off to the right of Brendan Colgan. They tangle up on it. Salak will throw it into the corner. Keblinger picks it up looking for an option. Popoff pulls him off quickly, sends him down to the ground. Salak shoves Slahetka to the ground as Kramer steps in, takes it away. Kramer on the near side looking for options. Out to Pastuka at the top of the zone. Pastuka back to Kramer. Near dot has it on the back end. Goes to the forehand at the near half boards. Kramer down to the goal line. Salak back to Kramer. A shot and a save by Colgan. Baker into the corner to Salak. Pop off, trying to shove him along. Instead, Keplinger rattles it over near side. Kramer settles it down. Backhands it along to Keplinger. Remember, no Gus Ford. Usually be out there here on this power play. Pastuka at the point. Back to Keplinger and it. Hop over his stick. Doesn't matter though. Salak found it. Kramer, a quick backhand touch to Keplinger. Salak trying to center out to Kramer. It eventually got there, but the shot got deflected into the corner. Baker steps up, banks it off of the end boards. Pop off and Salak now. They fight for it. Salak trying to take it away from Popoff. It eventually gets to Kramer. Banks it out to the point. Pasuka quickly down to Keblinger and into Kramer in the corner. 48 seconds to go here on the power play for Carolina. Kramer out to Keplinger. Far side, Baker to Pastuka, back to Keplinger, a one-timer save. Baker trying to get the rebound, poked into the slot, clearing it, and it eventually trickles back out to the neutral zone. Carolina holding the attacking zone for the first minute 25 of the power play. Not able to get a shot on goal, though. Keplinger, he gets wrapped up again. He wanted a call as he was battling the Slahetka and said Bersani will dump this one in. And now we have a stoppage. And Slahetka is going to go off. And it also looks like Keplinger is going to go off. They call Slahetka for a hold. I saw one of the referees flash 10. Gave him an unsportsmanlike conduct. This is going to be only two. Apologies for that. And sports and line conduct against Keplinger. Yeah. 
And it looks like it is going to be 10. They're asking Keplinger to go to the dressing room because we only have 6.30 remaining in the second. And so Keplinger is going to go off. They still have it listed as a minor, but it looks like it's going to be a 10-minute misconduct. Let's see if it's a game misconduct against Josh Keplinger. But so Carolina, though, is, has five on three now for the next 15 seconds, and then they'll have a power play for a minute 43 once again. Carolina, the Little Italy power play. Clay Keeley over Tucker Firth, a one-timer snap his stick. Batita into the corner. Behind the net. Batita eventually gets it over to Seolik. Firth got a new stick, Leighton out of the box. Now a power play for Carolina, five on four here for the next minute, 35. Batita chips it along. Chris Seolik stepping down into the near corner. They battle for it. Clay Keeley got it, but Storjahan will then dump it all the way down. So it is a 10 minute misconduct for Josh Keplinger. So he's gone for the second period in the first 4.30 of the third. But Carolina right now on the power play. They're 0 for 2 tonight. They have a minute 10 remaining on the holding call against Nolan Slahatka. They're getting the first unit back out there. Roman Kramer to Schnapp. Down to Kramer again. Behind the net. Kramer to Salak near side. Salak out to the point. Spins. He's searching. Left it for Kramer. At the point, Pastuka far side to Baker, walking in a save by Colgan. And he covers here with 5.17 to go. And now he got some extracurriculars. He saw Colgan throw a punch there. You got Popoff and Schnapp going into the boards. Schnapp has a hold on him, and he tackles him to the ground. Every time Jordan Popov comes back to Winston, I remember he played a few games with the Thunderbirds at the start of this year. Always finds himself in a situation like that. With 5.17 left to go here in the first period, the officials are now have to sort this one out once again. Not looking like a linebacker there or a lineman. Pushing him off of the, pushing him on the net. Knocking the net off its moorings and then tackling him to the ground. Popov was able to go back to the bench. You still got Slahetka in the box for 48 seconds. You have to see what they're going to give Jacob Schnapp here. Remember, Josh Keplinger was just sent to the dressing room for a 10 minute misconduct. And they put two minutes up for Schnapp. The franchise leader in penalty minutes. And so it looks like Gordon Whalen is going to be serving the two minutes, which means Schnapp probably has more than that. So 
So we at least know we'll have four on four. For the next 48 seconds, and then Columbus will be going on a power play for about a minute 12. And so they call a slashing minor against Schnapp, and then they also call the roughing minor, which is what Gordon Whalen is serving as we're back underway. Four on four here. And Thunderbirds won the draw in their defensive zone. Jan Salak to Yuri Pastuka in the neutral zone. The red line trying to flutter it along the Salak. Ball quill gloved it down, or else Salak would have been back in. On the near side, Yuri Pasuka takes a hit from behind from Alexander Jamaev. Joe Kennedy got to it, though, found Salak. Here's a quick shot from Tucker Firth. That's blockered out of play here at 4.50 remaining in the second period. Well, this one's starting to get chippy here at the Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina, though, still the one to nothing lead with the penalties and hits starting to mount up here on a Thursday evening in Winston-Salem. 4.50 to go here in the second period. one nothing Thunderbirds. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of your Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersap.allenton.com. 50 remains here in the second period and Carolina has a 1-0 lead over Columbus. He got 21 seconds left of 4 on 4 then Nolan Slahetka will come out of the box. Jacob Schnott was called for a slashing minor as well as a roughing minor that's being served by Gordon Whalen. And the reason why there's not more up there on the and penalties for Carolina is because they were an off, they were Jordan Popoff was also called for a roughing call. As now they send Popoff over to the penalty box. But attacking zone draw for the Thunderbirds. Four on four here for the next 21 seconds. You got 450 to go here in the second period. Nate Keeley and Josh Petrantonio for the draw. Petrantonio wins it. And it's picked up behind the net by Parker Layton. He starts up on the far side. And I'll go back behind the net with John Batita closing. Petrantonio over to Layton. Sends it right back to him. Four seconds and three. Slahetka getting ready to come out of the box. That's just what. Columbus is waiting for is now they'll have a power play here for the next minute and 10 seconds. They are 0 for 2 on the power play here tonight and they're going backwards as Parker Layton spins in his own defensive zone. Looks near side to Ryan Hunter. Hunter drops it back for Josh Petrantonio. Backhands it along. Cavalier whiffs on a pass. Luckily at Tucker first standing right there over at the far point. It's Brian Moore near side to Josh Petrantonio who's hit the post here tonight. Petrantonio he waits. Can't find a lane. Instead goes down to Kyle Moore. Moore gets tangled up. And Kennedy takes it away from him and clears it. There are 3.53 to go in the second. 34 seconds left to go. And the power to play for Columbus. Parker Layton across the blue line. And it poked away. And Salak and him go into the corner. Got rid of it. It's Carter Shinkrook spinning. Goes far side. Whiffing on a one-timer is Brian Moore. This former finishes off a hit on him in the corner. Kyle Moore, far side, back to Brian Moore. He waits, whiffs on a pass again. Farmer takes it away before it's once again intercepted. Here's Layton trying to center one. Pasuka went down to a knee and got a touch to it. Thunderbirds want a penalty. Is now Farmer and Moore. They're going to drop the gloves over in the far corner, and Moore sends them down to the ground quickly. Looked like Farmer whiffed on his initial right hand, and all his momentum took him tumbling to the ground. But this one continues to mount. You don't think these sides are ready for the playoffs? They still got two more before the weekend's over. And a whole nother period to go. Farmer and Brian Moore will go to the dressing rooms with five minute majors for fighting. And we won't see them until the start of the third rather into the third.
So before we get to the second intermission, we will have at least 38 penalty minutes in this one. With 36 coming in the last 1647. More was just signed today. And Now of a face-off coming to the left of Mario Cavalieri. And Carolina did kill off the penalty. So we're back to five on five. With three, 13 remaining here in the second period. And Jan Salak is tossed out of the net. I'll bring in Roman Kramer against Cody Wickline. Face-off trickles behind Kramer. Clay Keeley now trying to settle down a bouncing puck. Lost an edge into the corner. Jameev now and Wickline trying to take it away. Kramer joining the fray. Pokes free on the far side. Kramer will run it down. As he looks for an option. Throws it off the leg of a man and it skips past Shittenkaruk and Slahekta goes back to collect. Still got Schnapp in the penalty box. Clay Keeley. Far side. Justin Bioni into center ice. And Jan Salak who spins away from Wickline. He's still got Alex Storjahan closing on him. Clay Keeley threw it back, and Slack will go back to pick it up. 2.37 to go here in the second period. A 1-0 lead for Carolina. Now it's a foot race between Kramer and Slahetka. Kramer wins it. It looks like they waved off icing before that. As now Jameev comes in from behind and shoves down Kramer into the boards with an elbow. Kramer down on the ice. After taking a big hit, he gets back to his feet, but blatant right there. Luckily, Kramer's back to his feet. That could have been a whole lot worse. Fans are pleading for five. As now Schnapp and Jameev yelling at each other at the penalty boxes. And Jameev will be going to the dressing room. They call it a boarding minor, but there's 2.24 remaining here in the second. So Carolina goes back to a little Italy power play. As they now correct it to five. So now Carolina, five minutes coming up on the power play. For a boarding major. Carolina with plenty of time trying to extend its lead. 0 for 3 on the power play tonight as Alexander Jameev has been given a match penalty. And his night is done. Face off to the left of Brendan Colgan. Chris Siolik wins it. Sequoia Swan shoves him down to the ground after he wins it though. It's poked away at the point. Pastuka has to go back to collect. So this power play will extend into the third period for Carolina. Unless... And the call is made. Baker rattles this one all the way around. Chris Siolik stepping up into the corner. Takes a hit from Layton. Spun to the ground. Salak and Sequoia Swan go into the corner. Salak trying to take it away. Left it for Kramer. There's Kramer. Out to the point. Baker near side to Bestuka. Bestuka looking for a lane. Can't find one. We're under two minutes to go. Here in the second period. Kramer down low to Salak. Back out far side. Baker had it hop over his stick. And it goes back in front of the Thunderbirds bench. This ice getting pretty rough here. Here late in this second period, we have extended intermissions tonight to get the ice ready in between periods as it's dumped all the way down. And Cavalieri will play it as Columbus gets off for a change. 
Under 90 seconds to go here in the second period. It's a 1-0 Thunderbirds lead. Four minutes remain on the match penalty against Alexander Jemayev. Dawson Baker throws one cross corner. Salak and Popoff race after it. Salak pins Popoff to the boards. Out to the point and Dawson Baker to John Batsita. Back hands it along. Salak spinning him into the corner. Fires it out to the point. Baker sends one in. Got deflected by Popoff. Batita spins away from him. Holds in the far corner. Sends it out to the point. One minute to go here in the second. Pastuka shot goes off the leg of Storjan. And Batita. Far corner. Trying to get it back out to Pastuka. Settles it down. Finds Baker. Carolina still yet to have a shot on goal here on this extended power play. Kramer. Floats it to Salak behind the net. Him and Popoff race after it. Salak gets by Popoff. Spins back over into the far corner. Now to the point. Pastuka near side. Kramer centers one. But Tita couldn't get a touch to it. Good look there for Roman Kramer and John Batita. Batita low on goal scorer here tonight. 22 seconds to go here in the second period. Carolina leading one to nothing. Baker with 17. Over to Pastuka, has his pass intercepted by Sorjahan. Now here they come two on two. Sorjahan drops it off, shin correct, top of the slot, a shot. And that one's blocked, rebound from Sorjahan, and they score. It went off of Baker high, he's down in the slot. Alex Sorjahan found it on the rebound, and it's able to score here with only 6.2 seconds left to go here in the second period to make it a 1-1 game. But the bigger story right now is Dawson Baker. Baker still down, being attended to by Josh Linville. And Damian Catpool, scary sight there. As Baker now gets back up to his knees and up to his feet. So Baker will go to the dressing room. We'll have to see. After the intermission, if he comes back out. But as it stands, it's a 1-1 game with 6.2 seconds left to goal. It's a shorthanded goal for Alex Storjohn. That's his 23rd. And it comes at the 1954 mark here in the second period. Carolina, though, still at 242. After the Alexander Jemayev match penalty and the two sides will call it for the second period. So 40 minutes are in the books here in Winston-Salem. That second period got away. And at the end of 40 minutes, we're tied up at one here in Winston-Salem. And there's a lot to get to on the second intermission report, which is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza. Carolina will have 236 on the power play coming out of the second intermission. We have to see the, the latest on Dawson Baker and uh, a lot of penalties there in that second. We're through 40 in Winston-Salem. 1-1 between Carolina and Columbus. Back with the second intermission report after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can be it. 
give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. at the Fairgrounds Arena. Brendan Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. It has been an interesting one here so far tonight and it has been one that has really started to get away and in that second period, a uh, big reason why. In the first period though, Carolina had a one to nothing lead. It was John Batito with an assist from Dawson Baker at the 7-0-1 mark that gave Carolina the one to nothing advantage after they were outshot 15 to 14 across the first period. And then we get to the second, and that's where the physicality in this one started to pick up. Physicality, hits, some fights, a little bit of everything there in that second period. And we start our penalty summaries. Justin Bioni and Ryan Hunter are both called for roughing calls at the 413 mark. That seemed like the official's way to try to be able to settle things down if anything was to escalate with the game then continue to escalate Josh Kevlinger was calling for a hooking call that put uh, Columbus on their first power play of the evening they would not score on that and then you go to the 1147 mark it was a slashing call against Parker Layton that put Carolina on the power play Nolan Slahetko would then be calling for a holding call but at that same moment at the 1330 mark and it's for some like conduct misconduct was called against Josh Kevlinger for arguing with an official and so that ended up being a 10 minute unsportsmanlike conduct misconduct not a game misconduct he will be available eventually in the third period but so for Kevlinger he went off with six and a half minutes to go there in that second period then you continue to go. You fast forward about a minute 13. Jacob Schnapp and Jordan pop off. They got tangled up. Schnapp ended up suplexing him to the ground and ended up being roughing calls against both of them. But also Schnapp was called for a slashing call that put Columbus on the power play. And so from there, and so from there, you had Columbus back on the power play. And then at the 16:47 mark, Brian Moore and James Farmer dropped the gloves. And so both of them got five-minute majors for fighting. And this one just continued to roll. 51 seconds later, rather 49 seconds later, Roman Kramer and Alexander Jameev were rushing down into the corner. And Jameev ended up slamming Kramer into the boards from behind and ended up being a boarding match penalty call that has sent Alexander Jameev off early. And it put Carolina on a five-minute power play. And Columbus's penalty kill this season has been terrific and it has been terrific here tonight. Carolina not getting much really anywhere on any of their power play opportunities here tonight. And it ended up being a power play opportunity and then as the second period started to wind down Carolina turned the puck over at their attacking zone blue line and going the other way was Ryan Hunter, Nolan Slahenka and Alex Storjahan and after the initial shot Dawson Baker went down to the ground after it looked like the puck hit him high. He went down to the ground. Play continued, though, and Alex Storjahan was able to find the puck, and he was able to snap home a goal to tie us up at one at the 1954 mark there in the second period on the shorthand to tie the game up at one. But more importantly for the Thunderbirds is the health and of Dawson Baker. Baker this season career year of 69 points he went down to the ground took him a little bit to get back up and then was helped to the locker room and so we have to see what the latest will be on Dawson Baker for the third period 
But nonetheless, it has been everything that you can think of here on a Thursday evening at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. We have a 1-1 game between the top two teams in the Continental Division, Carolina and Columbus. John Vitsita at the 7-0-1 mark and Alex Storjahan of the, of the first period, I should say, with an assist from Dawson Baker and Alex Storjahan with an assist from Nolan Slahetka and Ryan Hunter at the 1954 mark in the second period have us tied up at one. Taking a look at the netminders in that second period, Mario Cavalieri, he ended up saving 10 out of 11 shots. Brendan Colgan saved all seven shots that he saw as Columbus is leading Carolina 26 to 21 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal. Tracker Cavalieri has saved 25 out of 26. Wow. Colgan has saved 20 out of 21. Right now, the physicality just continues to ramp up here in Winston-Salem. We still got 20 more minutes here tonight. And then still 120 minutes coming up across the rest of the weekend. Game 2, 7.35, puck drop tomorrow evening at the right back here in Winston-Salem. And it's 7.05 on Saturday for the regular season finale down at the Columbus Civic Center. These two sides could see each other three more times at the max after this weekend. That would be in the Continental Division Finals. For both sides, what matchups next weekend? Carolina and Port here on, and it'll be Columbus and Mississippi in the first round of the Commissioner's Cup playoffs. We're here at the second intermission, and the second intermission report is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza, an Italian restaurant in Roll Hall. Extended intermissions here tonight. Uh, 22 minutes due to the ice needing more time to get ready here at the arena. Ice got really choppy there as the second period continued to roll along. You had bouncing pucks, not getting true hops. And so now it might end up being a situation if someone can get one here early on in the third on the fresh sheet of ice. That could be the difference with how the ice has played here this evening. It has been raining all week here in Winston-Salem. A humid day here in the Piedmont Triad, and that has played a factor on the ice here this evening. But both sides playing on it. Both sides got to figure something out here. But 20 more minutes to go here on a Thursday evening at the Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina and Columbus tied up at one through two. Update you on the one of the game with that PHL, the Frozen Four, and NHL scores coming up on the other side of this timeout. Second intermission report continues after this. This is Thunder Birds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart, they were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee it up indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. For over 85 years, Mustin and Crutchfield has been more than just a local market. We've been a proud part of North Carolina's heritage. When our founders started in 1938, they sourced meats from local farmers and groceries from small companies. Finding a way to stay competitive in this market has been a challenge through the years. Luckily, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, and now we have close to 50 local vendors that we feature. We're proud to partner with the Carolina Thunderbirds as a local sponsor, celebrating community values both on and off the ice. Mustin and Crutchfield, your hometown local grocer. Hey Thunderbirds, are you looking for a metal building? Here at Bulldog Steel Structures, we got you covered with multiple garages, barns, and styles you need. Contact us today to get your free quote at 888-551-2156. Or visit our website, www.bulldogsteelstructures.com and mention the Thunderbirds and we'll give you a flying deal. God bless you. Go, Go Thunderbirds! Thunderbirds.
Back here at the Fairgrounds Arena, we are at the second intermission. And the second intermission report is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza and Italian Restaurant in Rural Hall. John Batita in the first at the 701 mark. Made a one nothing game. Alex Storjahan tied it with six seconds remaining in the second. And that's where we stand after 40 minutes here this evening. Looking at elsewhere in the FPHL here tonight. One other game in action here tonight. And that's between Mississippi and Baton Rouge. Down in Baton Rouge. Lucas Helen with an assist from Connor Lynn and Dimitri Kuznetsov at the 16-24 mark there in period number one as the Mississippi Seawolves ahead one to nothing after the first 20 minutes down there in the bayou. Shots even at 12 across the first 20 minutes there in that one. Mississippi trying to snap a six-game losing streak, get some momentum before they see Columbus coming up next weekend. That's the only other game in the FPHL here tonight. Looking elsewhere in the world of hockey, you got the Frozen Four, the men's NCAA National semifinals here tonight. Denver, the Pioneers, the three over number three overall seed, taking down the two seed Boston University Terriers, two to one in overtime there in St. Paul. So Denver now awaits the winner of Michigan in the top seeded Boston College Eagles. And it's Boston College with a one to nothing lead with seven minutes remaining in the first period there in St. Paul. So no one's going to get the BCBU uh, National Championship that so many expected or wanted for that matter. But BC right now with a one to nothing lead over Michigan. Winner goes on to see Denver in the National Championship game coming up on Saturday at 6 p.m. Looking at the National Hockey League here tonight. Some games getting late across the, across the NHL. Two minutes to go in Toronto. It's the New Jersey Devils. They had a 5-4 lead, but that game has just been tied with two minutes remaining. So the Devils and the Leafs tied up at five up there in Toronto. Five and a half to go in the third period in Tampa Bay. It's the Senators and the Lightning tied up at two in that one. You got the Philadelphia Flyers in Madison Square Garden. They've scored three unanswered now by four to one lead over the New York Rangers there in the Big Apple. A lot of high scoring games in the NHL here tonight. The Red Wings and Penguins tied up at five. With four minutes remaining on the third there from Pittsburgh, you got the Canadians with a 2-1 lead over the New York Islanders with 14 minutes remaining in the third period. They're about to go to the second intermission. They have gone to the second intermission in Dallas, and it's the Winnipeg Jets with a 2-0 lead over the Dallas Stars. And then in the later games tonight, oh, rather a couple finals already across the National Hockey League. And Buffalo is the Sabres with a big 4-2 win over the Washington Capitals. And the uh, Florida Panthers take a 4-0 shutout victory over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sergei Bobrovsky saving all 25 shots that he saw this evening there in Sunrise. Two later games here tonight. Sharks and Kraken from the Climate Pledge Arena in Seattle. And then at 10.30 from downtown Los Angeles, it is the LA Kings and the Calgary Flames. So that's a look around the rest of the scoreboard throughout the NHL. College hockey in the FBA shell, and here at ours tonight. It's a 1-1 game through 40 minutes here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. Carolina and Columbus, the ninth time they're seeing each other this season. Carolina this year, 4-3-1 here against the River Dragons. Trying to make that 5-3-1 here tonight. Game two coming up tomorrow. There's about 200 tickets still available earlier on today. Expecting a sellout tomorrow night. It'll be special Olympics night. Coming up tomorrow at the, coming up tomorrow here in Winston-Salem, Carolina will be wearing specialty jerseys for the home finale. Toronto's game uh, in partner with the North Carolina Special Olympics and then the regular season rounds out on Saturday down in Columbus one final time this year. Carolina and Columbus tied up at one through 40 minutes. And a little Italy pizza and Italian restaurant. Second mission report continues on the other side of this time out. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey, welcome to Gatsby's Pub, your official after-game venue for the Carolina Thunderbirds. After the home games, come visit Brent. Hi, I'm Brent. Go Birds! 
Graybrook Technologies is located in downtown Winston-Salem near the Dash Stadium. We specialize in automation, integration, and motor control with our team of dedicated engineers, a UL industrial control panel shop, and our warehouse packed with VFDs and components to fabricate the custom controls your company needs. Graybrook is a preferred partner with Danfoss, Siemens, Schneider Square D, and others to bring your project to life with brands you know and trust. Visit our website at graybrook.com or call us at 336-310-9092 to learn more about the array of services we offer. Let's go Birds! Get ready, Winston-Salem. Jennifer Sapp, your trusted realtor and broker since 1997, puts the real in realtor, and she's proud to be a sponsor of yours. Carolina Thunderbirds. As a top producer and your go-to realtor for all your real estate needs, Jennifer Sapp is ready to help you score your dream home goal. Call Jennifer at 336-782-3148 or visit her at jennifersapp.allenton.com. Hey everybody, my name is Zach Taylor, owner of Lil Donuts. We're a donut food truck company specializing in apple cider mini donuts. We travel around to different events and festivals all over, including here at the Annex at every home hockey game. So next time you're out supporting your favorite hockey team, come by our trailer and warm up with some hot, fresh apple cider mini donuts, or by the Salem concession stand and get one of our specialty coffees or smoothies. Hope to see everyone around. Thank you and go Burts. All right, the second intermission and the second intermission report is brought to you by Little Italy Pizza, an Italian restaurant here in Roll Hall. Brenda Riley with you here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Got Jack O'Connell and Dylan Klein working behind the scenes here at the Fairgrounds Arena. Back in our WTOB studios, it's Rick O'Neill, the radio guy. This game has had everything here tonight. You've had goals, you've had fights, you've had big hits, you've had a lot of penalties as well. And for Carolina, they will start the third period on the power play for the first two minutes and 36 seconds after Alexander Jameev was calling for a boarding match penalty at the 17.36 mark. Columbus, though, would then get a shorthanded goal from Alex Storjahan with six seconds remaining in the second period on a rebound and a shot that went off of Dawson Baker that sent him down to the ground. We'll have to wait and see if Baker comes out for the third period. Hopefully he'll be able to. The last thing you want before heading into the playoffs is to see injuries become a factor. And uh, especially for a guy like Dawson Baker who's had a career year, a terrific year here in Winston-Salem. You want to wish the best for him and wish that he's all right. And he'll be able to get back out for the third period and try to be able to finish this one off. John Batita, 16th of the season for him at the 7.01 mark. Alex Storjahan at the 19.54 mark on the shorthand, getting his 23rd of the season. The netminders tonight, Mario Cavalieri and Brendan Colgan, they have been good this evening. Cavalieri has made 25 out of 26 saves on the night. On the other side, Colgan has made 20 out of 21. These two sides usually in high-scoring affairs through the best attacks in the FPHL. Both teams averaging over four goals per game. But here tonight, netminders have been playing well. And now who will be able to get a decider here in the third period? Steve Harrison making his way back out to the bench. Columbus ready to come back out for the third. Carolina's door has swung open. And they're getting ready to come back out to the ice for the third period here in Winston-Salem. Carolina on the power play for the first 236. Trying to get this power play going. They haven't been able to do much here against the uh, number one penalty kill in the FPHL. Will that change in the third? We'll have to find out. 1-1, Carolina and Columbus. The third period is next. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. 
Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. It takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Points in Salem, getting ready for the start of the third period, which is brought to you by Mustin and Crutchfield. Carolina and Columbus tied up at one after 40 minutes here tonight. And Carolina will be on the power play for the first two minutes and 36 seconds of period at number three. Jay Krupp will be serving the rest of the match penalty for Alexander Jameev. He has a seat in the box next to Brian Moore, who's in the box after a five-minute major for or five-minute fighting major against James Farmer, who's sitting next to Josh Keplinger in the, in the Thunderbirds penalty box. Keplinger will serve out the rest of his 10-minute unsportsmanlike conduct misconduct for about the first three and a half minutes of the third. No Dawson Baker on the bench for Carolina after he was helped out with six seconds remaining in the second period. John Batita in for the draw against Hunter Bersani to get things going here in the third period in a 1-1 game. The final 20 minutes are underway here in Winston-Salem. Carolina on this fresh sheet ice that might play a factor as the third period continues to roll along. It starts John Batita on the near side. He holds at the blue line. Shinkrook closes him down and he backhands it along. Picked up by Layton, fires it over far side. Keeping it in was Pistuka. As he trickles behind the net. Remember, no Justin McDonald, no Gus Ford for either side tonight. The two point leaders in the FPHL are both unavailable this evening. This one comes all the way back out to the Thunderbirds defensive zone. Jan Salak settles down a bouncing puck and brings it behind his netminder, Mario Cavalieri, who saved... 25 out of 26 shots here this evening. Roman Kramer into the attacking zone, into the near corner. Kramer trying to chip it along. Layton instead takes it away, and he clears. Carolina has had no answer for this River Dragons penalty kill tonight. Number one in the league for a reason so far this year. They also have a shorthanded goal. Here's Petrantonio up the near side, brings it behind Cavalieri's net on the far side, and he'll just snap it down on his netminder, Brendan Colgan, to kill off more time. 90 seconds remain on the five-minute match penalty against Alexander Jameev. Carolina has not been able to get anything going. Tucker Firth at the red line. Dumps this one in and rattles around the boards. Hops over Colgan's stick over at the far half. Ports Clay Keeley chips it beyond the goal line. Slahetka, though, he clears. Just over 90 seconds gone here in the third period. One to one, your score. Too far out in front of that pass from Kennedy to Firth. And Ryan Hunter into the attacking zone. A shot and a save by Cavalieri, guiding it into the corner. Kennedy disposes of Ryan Hunter. And Tucker Firth holds. 45 seconds to go on the power play for Carolina. Joe Kennedy snaps one in between Seolik and Nate Keeley. Keeley running after it as a chip along Kennedy. There's D spot behind the net, leaves it for Seol. He bounces around in front of the Zamboni doors. Four guys battling for it. Here with 25 seconds to go on the power play. Still jammed, and it comes out to Clay Keeley. Far side to Tucker Firth. Firth with Hunter closing out to the blue line, finds Clay Keeley. Keeley back to Firth, a one-timer, and a save by Colgan. Sliding to his left with 17.32 to go here in the third. He freezes. 
With nine seconds to go, Farmer and Moore both out of the boxes for their fighting majors. So both sides get one back. Kepliger still in there. Jay Krupp getting ready to come out in nine seconds. It'll be Salak and Bersani to the draw to the left of Colgan. Salak, he wins it. It goes to the half boards. Pasuka pins Shinkaruk to the boards. Shinkaruk jams it free. And Popoff goes behind the net to pick it up. Krupp out of the back. We're back to five on five. Carolina unable to score on the five-minute major. Sequoia Swan centers one. A nice shot by Gordon Whalen going down to a knee, deflecting the centering pass. Jay Krupp settles it down, throws one off of the glass. Sequoia Swan picks it up. Pastuka knocks the pass away, and Salak sends it right back to him in front of the Thunderbirds bench. Snaps it over near side to Roman Kramer. Kramer drops it off for Pastuka. Quick backhand pass. Whalen got stood up, but gets it back. Tries to rattle it around. Sequoia Swan got a piece of it, and it comes back out into the middle of the zone. Jay Krupp gets it to Jordan Popov. Has Kramer behind him. Lost it, and Salak spins and sends it back. Back into the attacking zone where Colgan quickly over to Carter Shinkaruk, Carolina getting a change. 16.40 to go here in the third period. It's a 1-1 game. Schnapp delivers a good hit on Brian Moore. He loses it at the half boards before Layton steps in. Take it away. Far side, Petita centers one. Colgan made a save and a quick touch pass up to Kyle Moore. Moore into the attacking zone. Leaves it for Ryan Hunter. Him and Nate Keeley exchange shoulders. Spinning behind. Keeley is able to recover. Pokes it up to Schnapp. Now here comes Carolina. Nate Keeley trying to dance to the outside. Slahetka got a poke to it into the corner. Schnapp trying to settle it down in front. But Brian Moore comes in and takes it away. Schnapp then lifts his stick from behind. And now Batita up the far side. Batita trying to get over to Nate Keeley. He does quick shot save by Colgan. Guides it back out in front of him. And Parker Layton snaps a pass near side. Tape to tape to Kyle Moore. Goes far side. Threw it out in front of Brian Moore. Joe Kennedy collects. Saucers one that's intercepted by Moore. Here's Kyle Moore near side. Behind the net. Throws one behind him. Kramer takes it away. Here with 15.40 to go in the third period in a 1-1 game between Carolina and Columbus to open up the final weekend of the regular season in the FPHL. Slahetka, his pass goes right to the stick of Joe Kennedy. We'll dump this one in. Jan Salak chasing after Nathan Bulkwill. Poked away, Kramer trying to get a pass away at Pastuka far side, instead it's in all the way back out to the red line. Kennedy dumps it in, took a ricochet. Colgan got a piece of it in Bulkwill. Puts the blinders on behind his net, and he holds. We approach five minutes gone here in the third period at the Fairgrounds Arena. James Farmer racing back. Throw a pass behind Bioni. Petrantonio got a touch to it. Behind Cavalieri's net, Jan Salak takes away the puck. Up the far side, he's got Wickline on him. Gets to the red line before... Columbus finally gets a touch to it, and Wickline looks the other way. Slides one to the Thunderbirds logo at center ice as Yuri Pastuka got to it. And Farmer fires it far side. Pastuka to Salak, settles it down. Here's Salak. Had it knocked away, lost his lid, and it's floated all the way back down on towards Mario Cavalieri. 14.20 to go here in the third period. Carolina with four shots here in this third. Out from Farmer there. It was deflected all the way to the corner glass as Columbus goes the other way. Jay Krupp, the near half boards, tried to center one. Second attempt goes off of Bersani. Ricochets over far side. Thunderbirds able to clear the zone. As Seolok finished off a hit on Slatka. Columbus had to get back on side. 13.55 to go here in the third. Whalen, the good pass up to John Batita. has got Seolok with him and Nate Keeley. Petita will send it behind the net. Layton whacks at it, finds Nolan Slahetka. Remember, no Dawson Baker here on the bench in this third period after he went out with six seconds remaining in the second. So Carolina without their top two point producers in this third period after Gus Ford was unavailable this evening. Ryan Hunter floats it in on Gordon Whalen. Goes down to a knee to settle down the puck, and Pastuka throws it too far out in front of Kramer. Oh, now go run it down on the near side. Here's Roman Kramer dancing behind the net. Kramer evades a hit. A big opportunity there, and a quick shot on Colgan is saved. As Balkwell tried to deliver a massive hit on Kramer, danced away from it. Here's Ryan Hunter the other way. Quick shot. 
Goes off of the leg of Firth and out of play. And that brings us to our first media timeout here in period number three with Josh Keplinger coming out of the box. Seven minutes gone here in the third period in Winston-Salem. Carolina and Columbus tied up at one. More from the Fairgrounds Arena after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. One to go here in the third period. Carolina and Columbus in a good one this evening. Two sides tied up at one here in the ninth meeting this year between the two sides. They see each other two more times after tonight. Carolina, what's at stake for them here tonight? They've won 11 straight at home. And have not lost in regulation here in Winston-Salem since all the way back on December 30th against this Columbus River Dragons team. Thunderbirds have scored four or more goals in nine straight games here at home. They have not lost in regulation since March 2nd. We're tied at one here in a face-off in the defensive zone is won by Columbus. Ryan Hunter throws it all the way back on his netminder, Brendan Colgan, who leaves it for Carter Shinkrook. He holds behind the net. 12.48 to go here in the third period. There's a turnover forced by Keplinger, trying to settle it down. Brian Moore recovers, though, and starts up into the attacking zone. And offside is called. The one loss here at Winston-Salem this year for the Thunderbirds in 2024. It's all the way back on January 19th. That was a shootout loss against the Mississippi Seawolves. Face off across from the Thunderbirds bench outside their defensive zone. It's won by Hunter. Shinkrook trying to dump it in. It might have gone off a man. Is now it's sent back out to the neutral zone. Kramer has it taken away by Kyle Moore. Gets it back. Snaps it over to John Batita. Quick tip over to Keplinger and dumps it into the far corner. Nathan Balkwill. Batita closing. Throws it by him. And on the near side, Moore. Looks for a stretch pass. Finds Ryan Hunter. Hunter has stayed on side, they said. But he lost it in Joe Kennedy. Short pass to Roman Kramer. Kramer dumps this one in. Petita chasing after it against Balkwill. Those two battle for position. Kramer takes it away. Kramer now, he's surveying. Out at the point, Kramer over to Farmer, walking in. Farmer a shot, and that one didn't get all the way through as it goes off the end boards. Petita left it for Salak, who has it at the goal line. Salak spinning into the slot. Salak trying to get a shot away. Save, rebound, it's loose in front. Pokes free back to Bioni. He winds and fires. Saved by Colgan. Petita gets the rebound. His back in. Got blocked in front before the puck trickles far side. Farmer can't keep it in. But a couple of good opportunities for Carolina. But here comes Brian Moore. Moore into the slot. Farmer knocked it away. And Salak settles it down. Wickline coming from behind. Putting pressure on him. Slot got it away. Farmer spins away from Petrantonio here with 11.15 to go in the third period in a 1-1 game here in Winston-Salem. Josh Petrantonio bats this one with his right hand to Justin Bioni. No hand pass as the Thunderbirds got a piece of it. Instead, Bioni backhands it in to the River Dragons bench. And a stoppage here with 11.04 to go in the third. A couple of good opportunities for the Thunderbirds there in that last stretch in the attacking zone. Colgan, though, making some saves. He was named a first-team All-Star on Tuesday in the Continental Division. Face-off, Petrantonio wins it on the second attempt, fires it for sign to Parker Layton. They'll float one that goes off of the glove of Cavalieri and goes harmlessly into the corner. Nate Keeley can't get it past Petrantonio. Gordon Whalen. Shoves a man down to the ground. That's Cody Wickline. Pastuka now. Snaps one off of the skate of Nate Keeley and starts up the far side. Keeley spinning his way into the zone. Backhands it in on Colgan, and he's content covering with 10.38 to go here in the third period. Mm -hmm. 
So a face off in the attacking zone. Carolina hasn't scored since the 7-0-1 mark in the first period. That was John Batita. They're now out shooting Columbus 31 to 27 on our Comtech LLC shots on goal tracker. Face off. Battle for it. Clay Keeley. He holds it in at the blue line against Sequoia Swan all the way into the corner. Chips one off of the boards. Nolan Slahetka fires it off with the leg of Hunter Bersani. Jerry Pastuka at the red line. Sends it back to his defenseman, Gordon Whalen. To his D partner, Clay Keeley. Too much on that pass to his twin brother, Nate. As Nate at the blue line turns it over. Bersani flutters it in on Cavalieri into his waiting tramper. And he freezes with 10.08 to go here in the third period. WTOB needs 10 seconds for station identification. We do that now. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Face off to the left of Cavalier is won by Kepliger. Held in at the point, though. Here's Slahetka. Shot through traffic. It went off of Tucker Firth. Trickles over near side. Joe Kennedy. Backhands it along. Shinkaruk was trying to snap it back out to the point. No one was home, though, in a white sweater. And Slahenka has to dump it back in as the River Dragons have to get back on side. Some confusion there between the white sweaters. They finally do. Joe Kennedy in front of the benches. Dumps this one in cross corner. Keplinger, first one to it. Shinkaruk closing. Second attempt, chips it over to Roman Kramer. He waits for Brian Moore. Backhands it out to the point. Firth steps up. Has it knocked by him, though, as now a nice shot by Chris Ciola getting back. A hand goes up, though, and it's going to be a holding call here at 9.27 left to go against Chris Ciola. So when we come back, Columbus is going to be going to the power play, but Chris Ciola going off for two minutes for a holding. 9.27 to go here in the third, 1-1 between Carolina and Columbus. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fans. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting-edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. 9.27 to go here in period number three, which is brought to you by Mustard and Crutchfield. A 1-1 game between Carolina and Columbus with the Thunderbirds penalty kill going to be put back to the test. Chris Seolit goes off for a holding call for two minutes, and so now this power play for Columbus gets another opportunity. They are 0 for 2 on the power play tonight. Penalty kill. Back to work for Carolina. Face off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. We have saved 27 out of 28 shots here tonight. Face offs won by Columbus. Carter Shincrook near side to Ryan Hunter. Down into the corner, Cody Wickline back to Hunter, out to the point, Shinkrook sends it far side, Slahenka with some space, a shot and a nice block by Tucker Firth as the puck ricochets over to the far point. Slahenka rattles it back around, Joe Kennedy into the corner. They battle for it. Puck still not free. Finally does trickle free, Capital Girl will snap this one all the way down. You can see the wear on this ice now here as we have under nine minutes to go in the third period. Humid day, not getting as many true hops. A pass from Shinkaruk to Slahetka, too strong. Slahetka takes a hit from Farmer, got rid of the puck though. Ryan Hunter drops it off here. Shinkaruk, top of the zone, far side to Slahetka. He spins, waits, throws it back out to the point, but he split Hunter and Shinkaruk. And Carolina gets another clearance. 60 seconds to go here on the Chris Seolink. Two-minute holding call. And center ice. Hunter dumps it in, tries to one off of him, and chip behind the net. Jay Krupp and Jan Salak battle for it. Salak finds it, and he clears. Neither special teams working for either side this evening. 
the far sides, Alex Storjahan. Poked away, Joe Kennedy now. Angles off Josh Petrantonio, and he clears. With 25 to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina. We got 7.48 to go here in the third period in a 1-1 game. Ball quill. Atkins at near side. Kyle Moore at the red line. Just got it past Schnapp. Gets it into the attacking zone. Kennedy and Storjahan behind the net. Kennedy finds it, and Kennedy clears it. Five seconds left to go. Seolik getting ready to come out of the box. And we're back to five on five. Carolina three for three on the penalty kill tonight. Brian Moore up the far side. Centers one. Seolik trying to settle it down. Schnapp comes in, takes it away. Spins near side. And now is ahead of steam. Schnapp all the way into the attacking zone. A shot and a save by Colgan. And he gets the rebound. It was 7.09 remaining on the third. And now he got some more extracurriculars behind Brendan Colgan. Got Kyle Moore, you got Schnapp. As well as Nathan Balkwill. There's Brian Moore again. Anders Gustafson has to hold him back. They're sending Schnapp. To the penalty box as well as Kyle Moore. Moore with some more words for Schnapp. Now they take Moore out of the box. He's just getting a towel. Nine penalty minutes here in this one. Kyle Moore is just egging on the arena crowd. So you got Schnapp. And you got Moore in the penalty box. They still have. They have to decide anything. I think it's just going to be some roughing calls. And now Brian Moore also being held back. He's getting an exit. Petron Tony had to hold him back as he was going right after the referees of Justin Crawford and Andy Lindley. They still have yet to officially announce anything, but looks like that is the night. For Brian Moore, who was just signed today, the Charlotte native. Kyle Moore and Schnapp are still talking. Thunderbirds look content with their explanation. Josh Petrantonio, though, the captain for Columbus, had to stay over there. And this has been very uncharacteristic for. Uh, in the franchise's history, yes, but this season these two sides really haven't had matchups like this throughout the year. Been relatively clean games, but been kind of high flying affairs, but nothing like the penalty minutes like we've seen here tonight. It's all the playoffs are right around the corner. And they still have yet to officially announce anything. Carolina showing four while Columbus showing five. 
So now they put two minutes up for Schnapp. So Carolina with the penalty kill. Almost consecutively now. And a face-off to the right of Mario Cavalieri. Face-offs won by Alex Storjahan. Carter Shinkrook. The Petrantonio at the far half boards. He waits. Down low to Krupp. Gets a right back. Petrantonio looking for a lane. Can't find one. The only option, Shinkrook. And right back to Petrantonio. Petrantonio to Krupp. Right in front. Shot got deflected by Clay Keeley. Over on the near side, Ryan Hunter. Out to the point, Shinkrook snaps it far side. Petrantonio, a shot got deflected, goes hard off of the end boards. Getting a touch was Keplinger. He picks it up, floats it over to Pesuka. He'll just smack it into the Columbus zone. A minute 25 to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina. Firth spins, tried to clear. Hunter kept it in, but only for a second. Keeley pokes it away. Far corner, Nate Keeley spins away from Shinkarook. He's got two white sweaters closing on him. He still chips it along. Petrantonio comes in and floats it over to Alex Storjahan across the red line. Snaps it on the tape to Jay Krupp. Far side, Hunter. He holds to Slahetka through traffic. Cavalieri punches it out of the air with the blocker. 42 seconds to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina. It's Ryan Hunter. Nolan Slahetka back to Hunter. Far side, Petrantonio waits for it to come off of the boards. Kennedy stepped up. It got chipped down to Krupp. Krupp tried to throw it back out to the top of the zone. Went off of the leg of Kennedy. Now chases after it behind the net. Krupp takes it away. Kennedy plays the body, takes it, and Salak clears. 17 seconds to go here on the penalty kill for Carolina. Gordon Whalen is serving the penalty for Jacob Schnapp near side. Wickline, one last opportunity here on the power play. Drops it off, walking in late, and a shot saved by Cavalry. Rebound, they score. Hunter Bersani right on the doorstep. Cavalry made the initial save. It was stuck in the crease. And he gets the back end to it here with 5-11 to go in the third period. Columbus has taken a 2-1 lead. Hunter Bersani, ninth of the year. Coming with five, 11 to go in the third, and Carolina now has some work to do here at home. Back underway. Josh Kepliger at the red line, fires one in. Slahek intercepts. Kepliger trying to keep it back in. Good hit there by James Farmer on Hunter Bersani as the puck goes into the corner, though. Wickline shovels it along. Kramer racing after it. Too much on that pass, but they cleared the zone. Instead, Layton will dump it back in. Roman Kramer, after Farmer gets tackled to the ground by Wickline, goes far side to Keblinger, puts the brakes on quickly. His pass knocked away. Petrantonio leaves it for Wickline, slides it back to Petrantonio, drags a shot, gets deflected, and it's out of play with 4.31 remaining here in the third period. Hunter Bersani has just tied it, has just given Columbus the lead. 40 seconds to go, and the Thunderbirds now will have to try to be able to find something here across the final four and a half minutes here in Winston-Salem. Columbus leads 2-1. to The conclusion after this, this is Thunderbirds Hockey. Mabel Chase Golf and Country Club offers the best in recreational amenities in the triad. Come enjoy a meal at the Pinebrook Bar and Grill, relax by our pool and cabana, and gear up at the Pro Shop while sharpening your skills on our 9,000 square foot putting green. And play around on our 18 hole Ellis Maples Design Championship Golf Course. You can find out more at maplechasecc.com. That's maplechasecc.com. Four and a half minutes remain here in period number three. Carolina trails Columbus two to one here in the first of three this weekend. Hunter Bersani on the power play at the 14.49 mark with assist from Nolan Slahetka and Parker Layton have the River Dragons ahead two to one. And now Carolina 
as four and a half minutes to try to be able to find an equalizer. Faceoff comes to the left of Mario Cavalieri. Goes all the way through the slot. And Kyle Moore goes into the corner. Sends it back out to the point. It's settled down, but not kept in. As Bulkwell couldn't hold it in at the blue line. And will bring a faceoff in front of the Thunderbirds bench for offside. Shots are 34 to 29 in favor of Carolina. Our Comtech LLC shots on gold trackers. This one snapped in to the near corner. Tucker Firth leaves it for Clay Keeley. Behind Cavalieri. Starts on the near side. Fires it up to John Bitsita. Trying to loft the pass. Hunter played it with a high stick. Doesn't matter though as now here's Roman Kramer. On the near side. Kramer gets hit hard. Goes hard down into the boards. Hand goes up, and that's the second time tonight that Kramer has been hit like that going in to the boards. This time is Jordan Popoff, and he's gone. It was Alexander Jemayev towards the end of the second period. This time, Jordan Popoff has sent Roman Kramer both times into the boards. And Kramer now still being attended to. And the Thunderbirds will be going on the power play. But Carolina already without Gus Ford to start this game. Dawson Baker went out late in the second. And now another one of their forwards and Roman Kramer down in the corner. Kramer back to his feet. Shaking out his left arm. And he's heading back to the bench. And now we'll spin back towards the dressing room. They put five minutes up for Jordan Popoff. He gets a game misconduct. And Carolina is going to be on the power play for the rest of regulation, even if they score. We just never want to see that, especially twice in a game. But it results in a power play for Carolina for the rest of regulation. Ofer on the night against the top penalty kill in the FPHL, and it starts with the Columbus faceoff win in the neutral zone, and it's dumped all the way down. Here comes Yuri Pestuka up the near side. Jan Salak into the attacking zone. Salak on the back end, spins away from a man. Finds John Batita at the near half boards. Batita tried to center one. Shinkaruk knocked it down. Batita out to the point. Salak down low to Batita. He waits. Tried to center one to Chris Seal. It goes off the back of the apron though. Batita chips it over far side. Kevlar out to the point. Pastuka near side to Salak. Salak. He waits. And Swan closing. Finds Batita in the near corner. Back out to Jan Salak. Out to the point. Yuri Pastuka. Couldn't settle it down, and it just trickles over the blue line. So we approach three to go here in period number three. Columbus a two to one advantage. Clay Keeley up to Batita. Columbus in the midst of a change. They had to snap their change. Batita gets it knocked away by Petra Antonio. Columbus finally does get that full change. Joe Kennedy starts up the near side. 2.47 to go in regulation. Carolina on a power play for the rest of regulation. 
Colgan got rid of it. Keplinger chips it back out to the point. Kennedy couldn't glove it down. Sorjahan intercepts and throws it into space for Petronsonia. Petronsonia, a former closing, spins away from him, snaps it back out to the neutral zone of Slahetka. Will dump it back in on former and finds Joe Kennedy on the far side. Kennedy back to former. Farmer to the outside, into the attacking zone. Tried to saucer a backhand pass into the slot. Instead, it goes off with the legs of Alex Storjahan and out of play here with 2.15 remaining. Steve Harrison still has his timeout. And when does he pull Mario Cavalieri as Schnapp comes out of the box? And Steve Harrison will use his timeout. Two to one, Columbus leads. Here late in the third, Thunderbirds on the power play for the rest of regulation after Jordan Popoff's been given a game misconduct. Carolina opened the scoring seven minutes in. In period number one, John Batito with an assist from Dawson Baker made it a one nothing game. And then when Carolina had another five minute power play with six seconds remaining, in the second, it was a shot that went off of Dawson Baker. He went down to the ground. Storjahan, he got it. And tied the game up at one. That is where we were until just before five minutes remaining. It was Hunter Bersani on the doorstep on a rebound. Giving Columbus a 2-1 lead, and that is where we stand. Netminders here tonight, Brendan Colgan and Mario Cavalieri. Cavalieri saved 27 out of 29. On the other side, Colgan has saved 33 out of 34, including all 13 here in this third period. Carolina out shooting Columbus 13 to three. 2.15 to go here in the third period. Does Carolina have a little late magic in them? Keblinger and Sorjahan for the draw. Keblinger wins it cleanly, but Zita out to the point, Salak. On the near side, net is empty for Carolina. It's six on four. Schnapp spins away from Paul Quill. Throws it back out to Pesuka. Settles it down. Pesuka shot. That got deflected. Near side, Salak races after it. Two minutes to go here in the third. Net empty for Carolina with six on four. But Sita. Far side, Clay Keeley. Paul Quill pokes it away from him. Keplinger steps up at the half board. Settles it down. Out to Pestuka. Near side, Salak. Near dot. His shot goes right off of Slahetka. Bouncing puck. Slahetka tries to clear. He can't. Schnapp found it. Drops it off. Pestuka to Salak. Top of the dots. His pass knocked around. Slahetka, they said, played, to, played it with a high stick initially, but a Thunderbird got a touch to it, so no call. And Pestuka goes back to pick it up here with under 90 seconds to go in regulation. Carolina down 2-1. to one. As now Schnapp somehow ends up tangled up with Nathan Balquill. Both of them were in the River Dragons bench. And it's going to be a roughing call against Balquill. And so now Carolina should have six on three. With a minute 20 to go in regulation, bulk will off for two minutes. The net is empty. But Mario Cavalieri at the bench, six on three. Carolina trying to tie it here late at home. But the faceoff is won and lofted all the way down by Josh Petrantonio as it kills off 10 seconds. 70 seconds to go here in the third period of Winston-Salem, six on three. For the Thunderbirds here. Salak into the corner. Behind the net. Chips it over far side. Kaplinger settles it down. Out to Pestuka. Near side to Schnapp. A one-timer. Saved by Colgan. He somehow got it with the blocker. Salak behind the net. Back out to Schnapp. Schnapp far side. A one-timer. They score! With 49.4 to go in the third, Josh Kaplinger ties us at two. The 15th of the season for Keplinger comes on the power play. And now the Thunderbirds will stay on the power play with a chance to win it. 
and Carter Shinkaruk is gone. Keblinger has had some magic here in Winston-Salem this year. Had the game winner against Danbury in overtime, also against Pori Huron. And now has tied us with 49.4 to go here in period number three. Carolina still on the power play. There were 42 seconds remaining in regulation. Jan Salak through center ice. Five on four here. Salak at the near half boards as it poked away. Trying to pick it up was Balkwell. Throws it to Sorjahan in front who spins and fires it all the way down with 24 to go in regulation. Cavalieri can't find the puck for a second. Just found it before Bersani got there. As now Keplinger with one last chance. 15 to go here in regulation. Dances across center ice. Keplinger will backhand it in. Takes a deflection over in the far corner. Slahetko whiffs on a clearing attempt. Schnapp and Slot now trying to poke it free with one second and none. And for the fourth time this season, Carolina and Columbus are going to overtime. What a game here tonight in Winston-Salem. And 60 minutes is not enough for the Thunderbirds and River Dragons. Carolina has won in a shootout and in over and in overtime against Columbus this year. Columbus winning the last one in overtime. Back on March 8th. These two sides, not much between them. Carolina this season in overtime is seven and three. And on the other side, Columbus is four and three. Goals tonight from John Batita. That came all the way back in the first period. Alex Sorjahan tied the game at one with six seconds remaining in the second. And the third, Hunter Bersani made it a two to one game at the 14.49 mark before Josh Keplinger tied the game up at two on a six on three opportunity for Carolina with just 50 seconds remaining in regulation as now Schnapp is being escorted. to the dressing room. So Carolina will be on the power play for six, the first 62 seconds here in the overtime, it will be four on three. But we got free hockey here in game one of three this weekend. Jacob Schnapp has just been given a game misconduct. for an alleged slur. Now it was just announced here across the fairgrounds arena. But now we go to overtime here in Winston-Salem. Tied up at two between Carolina and Columbus. Carolina on the power play here for the next 55 seconds. Here's Josh Keplinger up the far side. Keplinger against Sequoia Swan. Brings it behind the net. Keplinger gets rid of it out to Pastuka at the point. Pastuka settles it down. Fires it over to Jan Salak. Back out to the point. Pastuka. Salak looking. Pastuka far side. Keplinger top of the circles. Back far side, but still go one-timer. Salak got a piece of it. Picks it up, though, in the corner. 30 to seconds to go here on the power play for Carolina. Pasuka centers one. Threw it behind Keeley. Keplinger settles it down. 
4.20 to go here in overtime. Keplinger, far side, Clay Keeley. Back out to Keplinger. He waits, a shot, block Keeley the rebound, and a shot goes wide. He has it in the corner, though. Fires it out to Basuka, reaches out to settle it down. Back to Clay Keeley. Keeley gets around Balkwill, far side, Salak. Out to Keplinger, Keplinger, but still go one-timer. The blocker got there from Colgan as out of the box is Moore. We got four on four until the next stoppage and we'll go back to three on three. Cavalieri shovels it along to Bastuka. Both sides getting changes here. 3.45 to go. And the overtime here in Winston-Salem. Puck got tangled up in the skates between Petita and Siolik as Columbus controls on the far side. Parker Layton. To the outside in front of the benches. Gets to the red line and snaps this one in. Tucker Firth can't hang on to it. Ryan Hunter now battling against Seolik as well as Kyle Moore. At the near half boards. John Batita takes it away. Flips a backhand far side over to Joe Kennedy at the red line. He waits looking for an option. Getting pressure into the attacking zone. Spins his way past Hunter and into the corner. He goes up against Layton. Petrantonio joining the fray as well as Seolik. 3.05 to go here in overtime and a 2-2 game between Columbus and Carolina. We have four on four for right now until the next stoppage. Here's Nate Keeley. Plays a pass to himself at the far half board. Sorjahan closing on him. He does. Balkwell flips it over to Kyle Moore. Pass goes off of the skates of Balkwell and Farmer will run it down. Farmer with some space up the near side. Here's James Farmer. Centers one into Nate Keeley. Drops it back. Firth settles it down. He finds Bioni. Bioni down to Keeley. Keeley throws one off of the leg of Farmer. A bouncing puck tangled up at skate. Slahetka takes it away. Slahetka for his side. Finds Sorjahan. Sorjahan with wick line. Two on three. 2.20 to go here in overtime. He gets taken to the ground by Clay Keeley convincingly as Farmer looks near side to Justin Bioni. Bioni. Flutters a pass to Keeley. He can't find the puck. He gets taken down by Slahetka, and Storjahan controls. Gets to the blue line with Cody Wickline. Bioni closing. Wickline tried to spin away. Still has it, though, as Bioni shoves him off the puck, chips a pass off of the boards. There was a man hanging over the bench for Columbus. It went off of his legs, and Columbus gets it back. A minute 50 to go here in overtime. This is the first of three this weekend between these two sides. Bouncing puck, Tucker Firth takes it away. And it knocked free though. Petrantonio banks the pass. Kyle Moore can't settle it down. Joe Kennedy though can't either. Here's Moore and a save by Cavalieri. Moore one on one with the netminder and Cavalieri flashes the leather and keeps us going here with a minute 31 to go in OT. What a save by Mario Cavalieri. He's been great all night. He's had to make some tough saves throughout the evening. That one keeps us going. Moore's got 23 this season. He's looking for his 24th as now Brendan Colgan, uh, the netminder for Columbus, is having some issues with some of his equipment. He's trying to get it fixed over in front of the Columbus bench. That's why we have this stoppage here with a minute 31 remaining in overtime and a 2-2 game between the top two sides in the Continental Division. Colgan having some trouble with his left pad. It looks like he's got it figured out, though. And so now that was the first stoppage here in overtime. So now we go back to three on three. We go to three on three for the first time here this evening. That's where we were four on four for the better part of this extra five minutes. Colgan looks ready to go. He makes his way back to his crease. And it'll be a face-off to the left of Mario Cavalieri. This game of the playoff feel all evening long. Face-off. Kevlinger, he wins it into the corner. Joe Kennedy spins away from a hit from Ryan Hunter. As now the Thunderbirds stay control. They're with a minute 20 to go in overtime. 
Shots are 38 to 30 in our Comtech LLC. Shots on goal, Tranker. Kennedy goes near side to Firth. He walks it into the zone. Firth trying to drop it back and find Kevlinger at his pass knocked away by Kyle Moore. Moore leaves it for Petra Antonio with 60 seconds to go here in overtime in Winston-Salem. We will go to a shootout if necessary. Hunter up the far side. Spins back out of the point, trying to get it out to Petra Antonio. One off the skates of Kevlinger and ricocheted high into the air. It's jammed up at the kick plate over on the far side. Kyle Moore finds it. Fires it over to Josh Petra Antonio in front of the penalty boxes with 34 to go. Here in the overtime, Hunter, he waits. Dances past Firth, here's Hunter, still has it. His shot got deflected by Kennedy, goes over into the far corner. Ryan Hunter back out to the point. Petra Antonio is getting off for a change as Firth finished off a hit on Hunter. Slahetka with 15 to go here in overtime. One last chance at center ice. Over to Storjahan. Storjahan has it knocked away. Kennedy and him go into the corner on the back end. It's Storjahan with four seconds now. Gets it rid of it. Here's one last opportunity. Wickline to Slahetka threw it behind him. We're going to a shootout here in Winston-Salem. So 65 minutes, not enough here tonight. And for the second time this season, Carolina and Columbus are going to a shootout. Carolina this season in the shootout are three and one. Columbus one shootout victory this season. The Thunderbirds picked up shootout wins against this River Dragons team back on November 24th. And then on another Thursday, back on January 11th against Blue Ridge, they won in a shootout that night. About a week later, Mississippi ended up beating Carolina in a shootout. Mario Cavalieri this year is 2-0 with shootout wins against Binghamton back towards the beginning of November and then on that day, right after Thanksgiving. It'll be Alex Sorja on the first here in the shootout. Two to your score, and now it's a shootout. Sorja on. He'll start in on Mario Cavalieri. Sorja on spinning his way, top of the slot. He shoots, and he hit the post. Advantage Carolina in the first round, but the Thunderbirds without two of their top three. Rather, three of their top four, really. But no, Peter Panacic, Gus Ford, or Dawson Baker, but they got Josh Keplinger here in the first round trying to take the lead. Keplinger on the near side against Colgan. Keplinger to the back end, he scores! One nothing after one. No chance there for Colgan. Keblinger outlasting him. Going forehand, the backhand. And now it'll be Ryan Hunter trying to answer here in the second round against Cavalieri. On the forehand, he scores. After a round and a half, we're tied at one. Yuri Pasuka trying to put the pressure back on the River Dragons. The righty on the forehand. Thought about the slap shot. Goes with the snap shot and throws it right into the right pad of Brendan Colgan. And we are tied at one, heading to the third round. And it will be Kyle Moore if he scores here. Carolina would have to score to keep the shootout going. Moore with 23 this season. Starts on the near side. Very slowly into the zone. He waits against Mario Cavalieri. Moore, forehand, backhand, and he can't get a shot away. Carolina with the chance to win it in the third round. He was trying to be too cute. See, so smacks his stick 
on his bench. And Jan Solak, a chance to win it here in the third round. Solak. Sails it high. And we are going to sudden death in the shootout. Jay Krupp in the fourth round. Starts up the far side, brings it back into the middle. Here's Krupp on the forehand, saved by Cavalieri. Krupp ran out of space. Cavalieri somehow got the left pad back there, but he is in some pain. Looks like he might be cramping. And Joe Kennedy with the chance to win it here in the fourth round. Here comes Kennedy. On the backhand, Colgan got the blocker there. And we're going to a fifth. And now Cavalieri is going to have to try to power through. But now they'll go out to talk to the netminder, Cody Karpinski. He gets ready. Cavalieri, right after he made that save, went down in some pain. Cavalieri being attended to. By Josh Linville and Damian Catpool. Carolina has already had Roman Kramer. And Cavalieri is going to stay in. It looks like it might have just been a cramp. And now he'll see Josh Petrantonio in the fifth round, tied at one. The former Thunderbird, now the captain of the River Dragons. Walks in. Saved! Oh no, it trickles in! Cavalieri made the save. It went off of his skate and somehow found its way into the back of the net and now Carolina needs the score to keep it going. And they go with Chris Seolik. Seolik to keep this one going in the fifth round. Against Brendan Colgan. Seolik, he waits and misses the net. And Columbus takes game one this weekend in a shootout. By a final score of three to two, two to one in five rounds in the shootout, they take the two points on the evening. Carolina loses in the shootout for the second time at home this season, and now has to try to rebound tomorrow night in game two. Thunderbirds post game is next. This is Thunderbirds hockey. Finish strong. Start here. Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist. Here at Comtech, we think it shouldn't cost a fortune to have peace of mind. That's why we bring you the latest in smart home protection and home monitoring at prices you can afford. Already paying for home monitoring? We can beat it. Give us a call today or visit us at ctpower.com. That's ctpower.com. Comtech, your one stop for security, fire, cameras, and more. When it comes to performance, speed matters, just like on the ice. Introducing Same Day Dental Crowns right here at Twin Oaks Dentistry. With cutting edge technology, we craft crowns on site, eliminating the need for temporary. As proud sponsors of the Carolina Thunderbirds, we understand the need for top notch performance. We're more than just dental care. We're your partners in achieving your best smile.
Carolina falls in the shootout tonight by a final score of three to two. They lose two to one in the fifth round of the shootout. Josh Petrantonio, he gets the decider in the fifth round. A shot that was initially saved by Mario Cavalieri. Ricocheted off of his skate, off of Cavalieri's skate and trickled in. And that is the decider here this evening in the first of three this weekend between Carolina and Columbus. Carolina drops to 39, 11, and four here this year. They do get a point on the night, 114 now in the season, while Columbus improves to 44, seven and three, 130 points here this season for the River Dragons. And Columbus takes the series, season series lead here over the Thunderbirds with the win here tonight. And the Thunderbirds now will try to respond coming up tomorrow evening. Taking a look at this one, Carolina led one to nothing after the first period. John Batito with an assist from Dawson Baker at the 701 mark made it a one to nothing game. They held that lead until the 1954 mark in the second period. Alex Storjahan tied the game at one. Hunter Bersani then gave the visitors the lead with 14 at the 1449 mark uh, with a goal on the power play to make it a 2 1 game before Josh Keblinger tied it with 50 seconds remaining on a six on three opportunity. That sent us to overtime. Neither side could score, and the two sides went to a shootout. In the shootout, Storjahan was denied in the first round. Kevlinger gave Carolina the advantage where Ryan Hunter tied it up. Yuri Pastuka could not find the back of the net. Kyle Moore and Jan Salak traded X's as well as Jay Krupp and Joe Kennedy before Josh Petrantonio, his goal, ends up trickling in. And Chris Ciola cannot answer, and Columbus takes the victory here tonight. Your final score, 3-2, to 2-1 two, two to one in the shootout. We wrap up Thunderbirds postgame after this. This is Thunderbirds Hockey. I want Hui to live a long, happy life. I give him supplements to take care of his joints. He's on preventatives to keep the fleas and ticks away. It's the same with my Subaru Outback. He takes care of us every day and when we go on adventures. We get our Outback serviced by the experts at Flow Subaru of Winston-Salem. I love my Subaru and I know it will live a long and happy life if I treat it right, just like Hui. Once upon a time, not so far away, two heroes found the secret to a perfect game day. They had heard of a baker, one with big heart. They were thrilled he had the answer. Ava's Cupcakes is where he's set to start. From cakes to cookies, cupcakes, and more, we've got flavors that'll score and score. So the Thunderbirds cheered, ready to tell all. Ava's Cupcakes is the sweetest. Bakery to call. Hey there, Triad Thunderbirds fan. Introducing Tee It Up Indoors, your ultimate golfing destination in Greensboro. With our cutting edge golf simulators, you can tee off on world-class courses, no matter the weather. We're not just a golf facility. We're your partner in having a fantastic time. From golf lessons to corporate events, we've got it all covered. Plus, we even host birthday parties. Tee It Up Indoors, where golf meets excitement. Contact us today and swing into action. Back here on Thunderbirds postgame, Carolina falls in a shootout tonight by a final score of 3-2 to two here against the Columbus River Dragons. Your third star, John Batita with the goal. Second star, Brendan Colgan, saving 36 out of 38 shots and winning in the shootout. Hunter Bersani is your first star on the evening. Carolina here tonight, they didn't have Gus Ford to start things off, and then they lost Dawson Baker late in the second. They lost Roman Kramer in the third. Mario Cavalieri went down in the shootout, uh, got back to his feet. That looked like it might have just been a cramp, but it ends up uh, being a tough night for the Thunderbirds. A lot of penalties in this one. This one was physical. There was a lot of boarding calls, and uh, now we'll have to see what these two sides look like tomorrow for game two, uh, coming up at 7.35 p.m. Eastern tomorrow evening here in Winston-Salem. Pre-game cover starting at 7.05 here on Thunderbirds TV and on WTOB. Game three, regular season finale at 7.05 on Saturday down in Columbus. So Carolina now will have to try to regroup, try to be able to come back and pick up a victory tomorrow or else they will lose the season series here against the River Dragons. But an entertaining one tonight, one that has set the tone for the rest of the weekend, and now we have to see how these two sides respond. Carolina falls tonight in the shootout for only the second time this season, 3-2. to two. They lose 2-1 to one in the fifth round of the shootout. That'll do it for us here on a Thursday evening in Winston-Salem for 
Jack O'Connell and Dylan Klein working me on the scenes here in Winston-Salem. And back in our WTOB studios, Rick O'Neill, the radio guy. I'm Brendan Riley saying so long for Winston-Salem. Carolina falls in a shootout 3-2. to two. Lose 2-1 two to one in the fifth round of the shootout. Going back for game two tomorrow starting at 735 right back here in Winston-Salem. This has been Thunderbirds Hockey.